two years ago, I would have edited something like that and been like, who's gonna like this? But I got some of the most responses out of it. I just had to stop worrying about, is this stupid? If I like it, you're gonna see. It's hard to find that middle ground doing what you wanna do and what will help you financially. Rather than just going to this shoot for this show and getting these pictures because I need the money. Doing an idea shoot that I have is just more fulfilling because it's like this idea I grew in my head. I had this vision and I applied it and it worked out. Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to episode 75 of Ruse Radio. We are back at it again with a very special guest. Special guest, could you please introduce yourself? My name is Anthony Summers. I go by Always Anthony on most social media. Uh, local photographer. Your boy. Your boy. <laughs> so when you are taking pictures, what is going through your mind when you take a picture? Because for everybody, for me... It's what I see in the frame. I'm just mm -hmm. framing things. It's yeah. like I'm showing you a vision. What What is it for you? For me, uh, that's a really good question, actually. Um, I think what I like to kind of go for is to just kind of capture, like, like the the energy of the room in in that single moment, if that makes any sense. Like it, like okay. So most of my pictures I do are either like portraits or for like a local clothing brand or local music artist or something like that. And I really just like to like a lot of the time they'll curate kind of the idea they have for me, and I'll just kind of take it from there. And really, it's just about getting the the energy that that person brings to a room captured on a, a, a picture you know like it, it it's well, easy pictures are capturing a moment in a way I yeah feel like. yeah and it, it's it's really easy to kind of lose that by just pointing and shooting like i look around for the right angle i look to try and get like you know as much of the let's say if i'm at a shoot for like a, a concert or something I, I like to get some of the crowd or like them interacting with the crowd and stuff like that like show that they're just a, a person you know like it's not like there's any crazy robot by any means or like anything like that like it's it's just the fact that they're a cool person out here they're they're trying to have bring that energy to the crowd or whatever and and it's my job to, to capture that and so yeah like the role that they're playing in that moment yeah. how can i symbolize this best yeah, yeah. in one photograph yeah exactly yeah. sometimes it's really hard because like you know you'll race to one spot and then like they're they're you know they're spitting into the mic at, at a fan or something, and then they'll look over at you and and spit into the camera, and then they'll just walk directly to the other side of the, the stage, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here now. Like so, it's 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 really fun. I don't know. I really like to just kind of go into a lot of my shoots, like freestyling a lot of it, and a lot of the times you'll get like one shot, and then you'll be like, oh well, maybe if I go over here, like, or if you do this. And then it'll look 10 times better. And, or like a lot of the time, like a lot of the time I go into these shoots and they're like, I don't know what to do with myself. And I'm personally not the best with like telling people how to pose. Like I really like just having you naturally kind of just feel yourself. And so we'll get one shot and then I'll see like an angle and I'm like, I'll go here. And so it really, a lot of, like we were talking about earlier, like freestyling, a lot of stuff like, like, you know, podcasts or, or photography or anything. It's just more organic. You know, yeah. it's more, you can tell if somebody's posing and doesn't feel comfortable. It translates to the picture a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of, um, a lot of what makes a great photographer, a great photographer, a great director, a great director, a great interviewer, a great interviewer is yeah. because they know how to navigate that dance between the person that they're working with yeah. and themselves. Cause yeah. it's a, it's a delicate thing. Yeah. It's not like you can just walk over somebody and expect everybody to be the same. Exactly. You just go in your yeah. way and do it your way. It doesn't work like yeah. that. I mean, like, the best filmmaker... That's why directing... The, when I see a really good director and they have a very distinct way of making movies, yeah. it blows my mind because they are like they just must be... A master at yeah. handling so many different people and getting them all to do yeah. the right things. Yeah, and and that's <laughs> that also comes down to knowing what you want. Yeah, out of a, a shoot and knowing how to execute it. And like, I'm not the like a lot of the time I'm the you know I go, I go with the flow. I'm just kind of like a lot. I, I I used to be like I used to feel like like a background character if that makes sense. And I know it sounds really shitty, but like it was. I just like to go with the flow and just kind of do what everyone else is doing. But as a photographer, if you're in charge of a shoot, like I did a shoot for um. Uh, Luke Benson's brand Tab, yeah, and and Jeannie, shout out Jeannie, she's the best. But um, she like it was like fifteen models at uh, uh, Crip 
Crips uh, studio he used to have downtown. And um, like I said, I usually just go with the flow. But if I was going to capture what I what she wanted, I had to control it and kind of, you know, have people doing what I needed them to do. And so I would, it was hard for me, but I would be like, I need you here. I need you here. I need you here. And I need you here. Stay there. And like, <laughs> It, I'm not that person really like I said earlier like I usually go with the flow so it's like that was like a little bit of a challenge for me but like in order to get what you want you kind of have to be like commanding you know with certain things and so and you have to be willing to compromise exactly yeah like a lot of the time like you have an idea and someone else will have like a different idea and um sometimes they won't match up but a lot of the time you can find that middle ground and it almost works better than the idea you independently have yeah you know and yeah well it's the balance between those two things though yeah. being commanding and being willing to yeah, compromise exactly some people are just too far right, in both directions right right yeah and then yeah. you lose your tone either way exactly there's, there's like a there's something magical about that collaboration yeah. between people i feel yeah like. and I it, mean, can, it can get kind of like like frustrating i guess if you're not if they if they don't want if they don't have an idea if they have an idea and you had a different idea and you like sometimes I'll be like I think my idea is better but like <laughs> it's their shoot like they're the one paying me so I got to do what they want to do but like if, as long as they're open to you know kind of hearing you out and being like all right well this guy shoots he he does pictures like let's see what he wants to do a lot of the time that can really really become like some of my favorite work I've done so, yeah 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 i feel like i like to go into things completely blind most of the time just because I know that whatever's going to happen there is probably going to... like it, it. In my brain, it's like... It's kind of like freestyling. But it's like every time I've ever had these doubts, like, oh, this interview's not going to be that great. Yeah. Oh, this isn't going to go that well. It's always been fine. Exactly. So it's like... I'm tricking myself if I don't think that's going to happen again. Yeah, and it's always fine. And you can all, and you can screw yourself out of getting some of your best work if yes. you if you put yourself off of like, well, last time I had this this feeling or like you know going into a podcast, so I thought it wasn't going to be the best, and it turned out the best. Like, yeah. or last time I had this feeling of going into this photo shoot. Exactly. It, yeah. You like, apply to anything. A lot of the time, like I find myself like going to a shoot and thinking it's not going to be, you know, I'm not going to get the best work. And it's literally some of my favorite pictures I've ever gotten, you know? It like, blows my mind because yeah. th that's, like, the unpredictable nature of the whole thing. Yeah. That's why I love it so yeah. much. It's fun, and, it, and it, it's exciting, too, because, like, I'll hear a, a shoot that, like, I don't really think that I would enjoy, and I'll be like, no, nah, dude, go, because you literally felt this exact same way that one time when you got, like, your favorite pictures, you, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. All the time in life, we let resistance get in our way. We let things, these thoughts inside of our brain, bog us down. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Because that doesn't have to be there. That's all B freaking S, dog, okay? Life doesn't have to be that hard. You want to make it a little bit easier? I got a way. I'm talking about CBD. I love CBD. I take it every single night before bed, about 50 to 100 milligrams, and it helps me tremendously. It helps me break through resistance. All those silly thoughts, all these things where we tell ourselves, I can't get that done. I can't go talk to that guy. CBD helps us break through that. It helps us sleep. It helps us with anxiety. It helps us with stress. It helps with pretty much freaking everything. It's a wonder. And if you want to get some CBD in your hands, you're hearing all this, you're thinking, man, Ruse, what are you talking about? This stuff sounds awesome. Well, let me tell you, CBDFX is a sponsor of Ruse Radio. That's right. CBDFX. We love you. CBDFX has got gummies. They got tinctures. They got oils. They got all kinds kinds of ways for you to get that CBD inside of your joints, inside of your bone. You want to make that happen? Well, if you happen to link in our description, you can get $20 off your first order of $65 or more. That's right. $20 off your first order of $65 or more. All right, Anthony, keep telling us what's up. Like, yeah. So like, go, go to every, that's one thing I like when people ask me, like, I've had a couple people ask me like, Hey, I'm a, you know, a, new photographer i'm trying to get into this like was there any advice you could give me not trying to say that like i'm like the guy to go to for that by any means like i'm still i'm Jedi still Master. going to like i'm still going to crip asking him about stuff i'm still going to morgan asking him about stuff shout out both of y'all like i still go to them and ask for the ask them about stuff but a lot of the time what i tell people is like because i can't remember where i heard it but somebody said shoot more and edit more than anybody you know 
And that's like, it's been huge for me because I literally like, it's hard for me to not go home after a shoot with a thousand pictures. Like, it's hard for me to like, I, I literally can't help it. Like I just have a thousand, literally a thousand pictures, but it's because I know that as long as I'm shooting more and more and more and more and more and editing more and more and more, it's going to get better. Like I, I think Jeff Sky had a song about it, the 10,000 hour theory. I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but like oh, you can literally, if you put 10,000 hours into something, you can become a master of it. And you I'm are, a huge <laughs> proponent of that. Bro. It's like, so funny because I try to not bring this up in every really? single <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I always say, I've said it like, because I now I told you I'm ramping up yeah, production. Yeah. We're at episode 75. Yeah, bro. I'm trying to hit 4,000, yeah, bro. Dude. And you know what? I calculated yeah. it. I've done the math. Yeah. 4,000 on average two hours every episode is... Is it really? 10,000 no hours. No shit. Dude, <laughs> I mean, like, that's really what you have to do. Like... Like I said, like someone told me to shoot or as two much and a half as hours every episode. Okay. I apologize. My yeah. math wasn't correct, and I was thinking about it as you were talking. But I don't even think that that technically goes down to, like physical hours of recording the podcast like no, it's, it's, it's background that. hours too bro like all of that like i mean we were like no i'm not i'm not upset about it by any means but we were supposed to start like an hour ago but like we were like dude we got to get this and i think that time goes into it too yeah. that's all like like I, I don't think people think about that part of it or like like the like in shooting like well they don't see the ten, the 30 minutes they talk before they start exactly, the podcast exactly. is what you're saying because that's a big difference yeah, yeah. or the like cuz that changes the whole dynamic of the podcast when yeah. we enter it like I've done that a million times I don't mean to do it yeah. it just happens but it's so like sometimes I can control myself and yeah. we'll just get in here yeah. and immediately we start yeah. but like I feel like there is almost a smoother entry when yeah. you do talk for Yeah, like and, and I think that just point. shows how passionate you can be about, you know, your craft and stuff. If you're excited to write when someone walks in, you almost immediately, we almost immediately started podcasting in, <laughs> in the kitchen, bro. I don't like, need to do it. No, That's but, how I talk, but, man. <laughs> like, I got excited when we did that because I was like, oh, this is going to be chill. I was like, yeah. we're going to be good. We're naturally talking. This is my first time meeting you in person. Yeah. Like, so it, it's, it can all come down to just like who you're working with and like what, each other what you both want and if you're both kind of passionate about what you want to do like i respect the absolute hell out of anybody doing any kind of creative anything in genesee county period because i know how much that takes how hard it is to stay committed to it without feeling like discouraged and i don't know i don't i, I hate seeing people like be hard on themselves about it because like it don't matter. Like, I hate seeing people seeming hard about it or, like, comparing themselves to others that are already having some success. Because I had a, I struggled with that a lot when I first started. Because I've been shooting for, like, six years. I started in 2017, but, like, just started taking it really serious probably, like, two years ago. Maybe even, like, a year ago. But, like, you can really get discouraged and, like, because you see other people doing what you want to do, good. But you don't you don't consider the behind the scenes of all of it, like like I look up to a lot of photographers around here, and I, I think like like I, like I I, str I still struggle with comparing myself to people because I'm like I'm not as good as this person or this person. But it's it's not about that at all. It's about just expressing yourself and creating what you want to create, and I think it's beautiful in that you know like. I will never ever like sit here and talk town on somebody trying to get into photography or videography or, or music or podcasting or anything creative because like I know how much that takes to really put your work out and and have it judged by others. You know, you could easily 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 get discouraged and be like, "Oh, this didn't really do that good on social media, so I'm not even going to try." Like, you know, like it's I don't know. I I do it cuz I like to do it. Like there was a shoot I was supposed to go to yesterday and it just didn't it kind of fell through and I was so bummed about it cuz I was so excited to shoot. Like just the act of shooting is fun, man. It's fun stuff. I used to do it for the wrong reasons and I'm starting to realize like I'm doing it for the for me now, you know. And if no one else likes it then what am I going to do? You You're saying know? a lot of things we say on this show yeah. because I mean, uh the other thing I say a lot is that I feel like I've been doing this podcast for the wrong reasons and even music for the wrong reasons in a way, but like in the sense that I was thinking about it as this thing that I had to put all this time and effort into. And I was like building it up in my brain as this difficult thing. Yeah. And then I made these reasons not to do one podcast every week, yeah. not to just 
reach to out to people and right. try to get them out. Because I could have been doing that for years now. Yeah. I just wasn't doing it because I was just making up reasons. Yeah. And then now I'm doing it, and it's like it's so silly, and I'm realizing like that's just you're stopping yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you can really put yourself off from it. Like I stopped doing. I took a big break for a good while. Just because, like, I felt like I was, like you said, doing it for the wrong reasons, and it burns you out. It really takes a lot of, like, like stress off your plate if you just take a step back and you're like, what am I, like, what do I want? Yeah. You know? And, like, like once you realize, like, what you want. I, I heard this fucking, this fucking quote the other day. It was, like, um, the two most important days of your life are when you were born and when you figure out why. And I was like, yeah. oh, shit. And and I don't know if it's corny, but like I think man, it just... reminds me of the quote: uh, "The two times you die in life are when you pass away, when people stop saying your name." Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, like exactly. And so I don't know, like I feel like I kind of want to just do it for me now, you know, not for any validation or like to get into any circle or anything like that, because you know, you'll end up at that circle or whatever, and you're like. I don't even want to be here. Like, yeah. now that you're finally there, you're like, oh, fuck this. Well, like, I think a lot of it, too, is when you're doing it for yourself, I think the universe appreciates that, if that makes any sense. Like, if you're not working for other people's interests yeah. and you're just working towards the common interest of whatever it is your goals exactly. are in relation to everybody else, yeah. like you're not thinking about it as this outward thing. You're thinking about it as me. Exactly. I think that the universe likes that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they'll reward you. And, and it'll reward you for it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like I stopped I stopped doing certain things for, you know, like trying to get a certain amount of likes on Facebook or Instagram or whatever and just wanting to put art out and show people like this is what i can do i made this i hope you enjoy it like yeah. and, it, and it'll turn around and, and it'll come back to you and like a thousand fold and so i so, think it's beautiful i must say with my music i don't think i've ever done that but i can say with the podcast because now i think about it with the music i put dude i will you, i pour my soul into that yeah. man it's kind of ridiculous yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll my yeah. older songs even i'd be like whoa right i, I did say all that yeah so no, for the record. But for the podcast, wh I think what it was is like I was looking at it like a like a like you would look at a job you don't like. Yeah. Like a thing you don't like to do. Yeah. But it's not. I love doing this. Exactly. Why was I and even And you forget about that. <laughs> yeah, you, you forget. forget. Yeah. Yes. You forget the reasons it. you're doing it and like why and then it's like once you think about it like that, you're like, oh, dude, I'll, I, I could podcast. Like you said earlier, I'll podcast with whoever. Yeah. I'll, I'll shoot with whoever. Like, I'm not picky. I don't care. Like I said earlier, I love, love, love working with local creators and, and local artists because, like, I know that drive. And I know, like, and also you get, like, some of the best work if you work in, like, like-minded environments. You know what I mean? Like, people that are interested in the same, even not even just doing, like, if they're not doing pictures, but, like, the same kind of, like, energy, if that makes sense. Like... It, you'll get like some of the best work you can just by kind of letting that f just being free, you know, just letting yourself do whatever. Like, and that's that, that can go back to like, I'm not saying that I'm just doing whatever work just to do whatever work, but like, and I'm, you know, I'm still kind of, I'll pick and choose kind of what I want to attach my name to, if that makes sense. But like, at the end of the day, I just like shooting. I know people like seeing their picture. If, if it's done well and so it, that that feeling feels really good seeing somebody like showing them the shot i got and they're like oh shit like you know what i mean it's so it's so fun i enjoy i enjoy it a lot so it's yeah. a good time man it's it's really i've been enjoying the hell out of shooting lately it's been a really good time and like i told you earlier i'm going to school in september to start getting into film and stuff and so but that doesn't mean that i really want to get into like like music videos necessarily like i know that's a lot of the work around here with videos but like i'm mostly interested i really want to do like short film stuff like kind of like just concept videos if that makes sense like just kind of weird stuff i don't know it's, i have this whole plan in my head and it's like i can't wait to just lay that all out and like more than likely next summer to be honest with you because i'm taking winter classes and stuff but like i'm telling you bro like it's it's really exciting the the future I have like planned, if, and I'm sure you feel the same way going to Chicago. Like it, you're you're so capable, you know what you're capable of, 
and just like be, it's hard to be patient for that and wait for it. But I just know that it's, I, I believe in myself. And like you said, like put going all in on yourself by moving to Chicago or like, like me going back to school at fucking 26, like it, I believe I know what I have and I know what I can have and I, I'll do anything to, to get there. And so yeah. I don't know. It's all about like, I really enjoy like that process. Like. Yeah, no, t to me, I think you should always look at yourself as a student in life. Exactly. Like, you should never, ever accept this yeah. idea that you've learned all the things. Yeah. And, like, never. Like, no why one would ever you has. even want no that? No one ever has. Like, no one ever yeah. has. And that's the fun part. Exactly. It's fun to learn things. Yeah. Like, it's fun to realize you know more than you did mm -hmm. that month ago or three months ago. Yeah. It makes you feel better. And seeing that progress and feeling it and realizing, like, oh, shit, I'm getting better. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, That's the 10,000 hours. Exactly. And believe it because like I had a really bad I have really bad imposter syndrome because I didn't go to school for any of this I didn't I didn't do anything like formal education like I didn't I wasn't even in multimedia in middle school or anything like that like I my friend Fernando shout out Vega he uh oh, shout out Vega yeah he um he we went to Chicago a couple years a good while back honestly at this point but <coughs> I took a picture of him off a of fucking iPhone and just like the framing of it he really he really liked it and so he was like bro when we get back I'm gonna buy you a camera and a laptop and I want you to start shooting and I was like okay and just that was 2017 and just really just strictly from the hours I've put in is where I've gotten is how I've gotten here and and in the advice of other people and, and just picking up tips along the way like like we were talking about Austin Bond earlier. That dude had he's I literally call him my sensei because like <laughs> he's he's doing. I I go to him and I'm like, dude, does this picture look good? Like, what would you do different? Da 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 da. And like that doesn't mean that I'm gonna take every single piece of advice he has, but it's it's important to. Well, you look up to his work. Yeah, and I know he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, like he really does. And so was well, it the best? The the, the pe that I mean, that's the best thing you could have mm -hmm. as an artist is someone that you respect that you know their art you yeah. know they're great so you know their sensibility yeah. Yeah. and you can go to them for advice exactly like, that is a and gift he was and he was my friend before either of us started taking pictures like i mean he, we've we've been friends since like 2011 so i know that he's not gonna bullshit me you exactly know? he's gonna give me the hard truth but it's it's to make me better because yeah. he knows that like i'm you know i could make some really good pictures and so i take every single piece of advice from all, so if you all send artists. him a picture he's like this piece of shit he'll, well no not necessarily <laughs> not necessarily but he'll be like he'll be like i mean i would have done this and this or you could turn this up or da 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 da, da but like and and like i said you take it with a grain of salt because you don't want to mimic someone else's work you know yeah. you want it to still be yours but, but like it's valuable but yeah it's valuable because he i mean he did have formal education in it and he's he does know what he's talking about and so when i do apply it like i'll literally be like yeah let me try and turn these shadows down or something and i'll do it and i'm like oh this motherfucker does know what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like I, I, now i know why i talk to austin so like austin has been a huge help Crip has been a huge help. Morgan has been a huge help in all those aspects. When you say aspects. Crypt, uh, people probably don't know. Oh, him. yeah, Travis Travis James, shot by Crypt, uh, Cryptic Filth. That boy, I mean, dude is one of the dopest photographers out here. He's literally, he's flint grown. My man's is out here, like, doing all types of work, working with whoever. Like, I appreciate that guy so much. I appreciate Morgan, like... I always thought, like, like I was saying earlier, like I would compare myself to other people. It would, it would be hard to not compare myself to them because they already had their roots in Flint. People already knew about them when I was coming up, and so I would be like, "Oh man, I want to, I want to do stuff like them." But like, it, like you start to realize, like you're just, it's not going to be the same as if you just curate your own brand and vibe and and yeah. and, and aesthetic and. And get proficient at being yourself. Yeah, and you can still apply certain things that you learn from looking at their pictures or their, you know, whatever, their work, and and still apply it to your stuff and have it not be... Well, how I look at it is everything's a remix. So yeah. what they're doing is them applying something, other things that they do. Exactly, seen. exactly. It's all the same. And it's all, and, and it's not, I don't think it's like jocking anybody else's work, and I don't think it's trying to, you know benefit off of how someone else works by any means like if you look at uh, shit, look at hollywood right now right now bro name an original movie you have seen recently 
I don't even want to talk they're about re- it. They're rehashing so many old movies because they've run out of ideas. And it's like, it's... it's it breaks could, my heart. Yeah, it sucks, man. Because there still is a lot of original work out there, but is it's just not going to catch because... Well, there's there's great original work. It's just not highlighted even. Like the Very, culture yeah, just doesn't even yeah. support it. You that's what, that's to, the worst. You part. almost have to search for it yeah. and look for it. And like those, like a lot of people shit talk like a Netflix like original movie or whatever. But like a lot of the time, that's where now where the original like the original creative work is at. Because shout out A twenty four. Uh, shout out A twenty four, bro. They have not missed yet. Like yeah. <laughs> so, it's it's really about just like doing what you do. And hoping the best that people enjoy it. And if they don't, like, I've come to the terms, I've come to terms with that. Like, if people don't like what you're doing, don't turn around and be like, well, I don't like it either. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I used to have a problem with that, but like, maybe, it is, maybe it is trash. <laughs> like, yeah, but it's, it's not. Like, if you don't. Fuck my shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I would do that a lot. And it's like, <laughs> it's not healthy at all because, like, it, it just discourages you. And it's going to make you not want to do what you're doing and what you're best at. And but, so, but there's something in there, too. When you when you feel that when you feel that you should recognize that like if it, it, you can go with what you're saying, just like it's a point of growth. Like yeah. you see that and you see it as something is happening there where what they said about it bothers you. Yeah, is it that you're not confident in what you made? Is it that it is what they said? Like right. what is going on there that's actually bothering you? Exactly. If you like what you made. It shouldn't matter what yeah. that one person said yeah. unless they're right. Yeah. And that's what gets me is like people just don't even identify the fact that that's what the thought process is. Yeah. Your brain's trying to tell you. Exactly. <laughs> it's and it's trying its best. I've found that like I used to like not lean into like the like I guess more like artsy stuff that you can do with photography because like I would What do you mean by artsy? So I guess like like just rather than just like a basic portrait of somebody like there was a picture i put out of like um this girl like and it felt kind of weird asking her to do it but like i had a vision for it there was this girl at the show and i literally just wanted her to she had these really cool glasses on it's on my instagram but um she had these really cool glasses on and i just wanted her to like like blow a kiss at my camera and like i felt like that like two three years ago i would have been like no that's corny don't do that <laughs> but like I had the idea, and it's now one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. And so I just, I, I had to get rid of the idea of, like, people are going to think this is whack. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I used to have that all the time. Like, people are going to think this is stupid, or, like, it's like what are you doing? And, like, fuck that. Who cares? You yeah. know what I mean? Who cares? Do what you want to do. Make yourself happy, and that's going to translate. And it's going to work for you. Like, once I finally gave in to, like, just, just put out what you like. Like, if you like it, don't think about what other people think about it. And it's gonna show, like it's gonna it's gonna translate into your work. I've literally like I could show you this picture. I could send it to you too if you want to like post it on the Instagram on the yeah the for podcast. Sure. But like this picture right here, like it's literally just a swing. But so like, first, I'll hold it up to the camera, <laughs> even like that. But yeah, I might like, be able to edit just, it right on top of there. Just shit like that, like I don't know, like. Uh, so if you were describing to the audio listeners, like what, how would you describe this so photo? I called it. I called it the void swing. I uh, I took this picture of my, my niece's swing that's in my parents' front yard in the middle of the night and I edited out the the tree that it's attached to so it just kind of looks like it's floating. But like two years ago, I would have edited something like that and been like, this is like, who's going to like this? You know what I mean? But it was, I got some of the most responses out of it. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I, I just had to stop worrying about like, is this stupid or like if I like it, you're gonna see it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how I am now. Like if you if I like it, I'm putting it out there. And that's period. And if 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 I keep doing that, I've found that it's like it works. And I'm finding my like my aesthetic and my you know kind of what I like to put like what I like to do like I uh, mostly I do portrait stuff now and or like local music events and stuff like that but once I get to where I want to be like I'm going to be doing stuff like that more often and because that's what I like to do you know it's hard to find that middle ground in any creative business really doing what you want to do and and applying that with like what makes you what what will help you financially, if that makes sense? Like, r- rather than just going to this shoot for this this show and getting these pictures because I need the money, like I like to like I find more joy out of doing like a shoot like that because it's fun for me. 
You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm not saying these concerts aren't fun or anything like that. I have a blast every single time I go, but it's like doing an idea shoot that I have compared to like doing something that someone else has is just more fulfilling because like it's like this idea I grew in my head and wanted like I had this vision and I applied it and it worked out. Like that's such a success, like like great succeeding feeling if that makes sense. I heard uh, just literally last night on my ride back from Chicago. I was listening to the Joe Rogan Theo Vaughn podcast that just dropped. And in the first five minutes, Joe Rogan was talking about how, because he just made uh, that new, uh, what would you call that? I was about to say comedy festival. But oh, it, no, his, uh, yeah, his, um, his comedy. Uh, it's a location, like, though. Yeah, yeah, like, what yeah, would you call it? Venue. Comedy yeah, venue. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> venue is yeah. the word I'm looking for. Yeah, I almost want to call it the comedy store because that's the one in L.A. Yeah. But, like, no, it's the mothership, right? He, made, the, the he mothership. made a new comedy store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd say, well, he moved to Texas. He, and he basically was like, made a comedy store. He did. In Texas. He really did. That was the idea. He went out there and he was like, there's nowhere to do comedy out here. Yeah. So he was like, fuck it, I'll make one. Which is super dope. Yeah. I'll tell you why. My boy Joe Rogi saw nobody investing in something that he believed in. So you know what he did? He went and invested in it himself. He made it happen. And that's what we got to do in life. We got to make our own investments. Stop waiting on the world because the world ain't going to do it for you. And if you want to make an investment yourself, you want to go invest in you, pull up your phone, go to that app store and download Robinhood. Robinhood's whole MO is making it nice and easy for anybody to invest. That's right. So if you want to go invest in Apple, Google, AOL, you go on there and you do it. And then you just make a moolah, baby. Bada bing, bada freaking boom. I love Robinhood. They make it nice and easy for anybody to go make money. I made money off of it. You can make money off of it. So why don't you just go do that right now? It's in the palm of your hand. Literally. Now let's hear what Hulk Rogan had to say about boarding the mothership. And um, he was talking about in that how as he was there, it kind of felt like it was always meant to be there. Yeah, I and that. it's just an interesting. He said that he's never felt that before because he's never really made something out of nothing. Yeah, and it was just interesting to hear him say that yeah. because that's what I do as an artist yeah. all the time. Yeah, I'm always making something out of nothing, right. and then once it's there, it's that gratifying feeling yep. like it's always been there and it was yep. meant to be there. Like when a really good piece of art is when it's put down and it's so perfect. You look at it and you're like, oh, oh, oh I yeah. can't, there's nothing I would change about Yeah, there's, I, I, I feel you 100% because, like, I'll literally try and go back to a picture, like, 10 times and be like, what can I do different? What can I do different? What can I do different? And I'm like, dude, it's, I mean, it's naturally gotten to this point, so, like, just leave it there. It's yeah. it's what it's meant to be right here. Just, just enjoy, enjoy it for what it is, and I think that's kind of the beauty in, like, that's kind of the beauty in shooting for me because, like I said, I don't have much formal education in it, so I literally just have to, like, I almost, like, go and look for, like, what angle I need, like, what's the right angle or what's the right, you know, composition, kind of like, 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 framing and ev everything about it. Like, it's, it's, like, it's like an equation. Yeah, you know what I mean? it it's is. like an equation. It's like you, you figure out one part of it and then you figure out the other part and then you just end up like slowly, you get the final answer and you're like, damn, how did I get here? You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's funny because you forget how you got there. You really do. Like yeah. there's a lot of songs where I forget how, like how many iterations there were until yeah. we got to or that. It's, yeah, it starts as one thing and it ends up as a completely different, usually better thing uh, than you, yeah. than you like originally 99 planned. Percent yeah. And it's like, that's the reason it got exactly, there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think that's that goes back to like it helps being around like like minded creative individuals because like I me and a couple other guys we've gotten together and we really we really wanted to do like a collaboration with just a bunch of different creatives around here and if that every time that happens like that actually happens a lot with um, Farillo Star and Brie Renee I don't know if you know them they're uh, yeah. two local R and B artists. And I work with. They them. were featured on yeah, sixty yeah, yeah. seconds with yeah. I, well, at um, least Furlo Star was yeah. So uh, every time I work with them, they're so creative and they have just they think so, like in such an interesting way. And having that different angle from like people that aren't photographers but know what they want in their pictures, like it, it always ends up being something so so cool. And like I just really like I mean uh, yeah, because everybody's got a vision. Yeah, everyone has a vision, but then you also have a vision. So if you like mash those together that's it the beauty. usually looks so cool that's like, the beauty yeah. of it man that's what i'm saying yeah. that's why i love doing things like this because i can't do this on my own yeah 
if I did a podcast on my own and right. I sit here and I talk to a camera and I'm trying yeah. just to just to make a show happen, exactly. it's not this. Exactly. Because I literally couldn't do this. Yeah. It, I just there's no other way to describe it. That's yeah. the beauty of collaboration. It's the magic yeah. in the middle there. And it's almost like like <laughs> you can get discouraged if you don't have that extra creative energy around you because you're like, what am I doing this for? No one in my, no one yeah. that I'm, like, it's almost like you feel like you're doing it. You're in a vacuum. You, yeah. You're like, I'm the only person that's like really has this mindset right now. But then you get out of that and you get around creative people and you're like, oh shit. Well, they just push you further. Yeah. Because they, they, they challenge you yeah, in a way yeah. that you couldn't challenge exactly. yourself in that little bubble. Yep. And you need that. You need that so much. Yeah, you really do. And it, like, like um, I work with uh, the creator of Black Star, Alex Shaw. I don't know if you've seen his work around here very much, but he, uh, like, me and when whenever me and him work together, he he knows what he wants out of his pictures, but he's willing to, you know, he's more than willing to hear you out and get your idea on it because you know, I mean, he'll he'll always be like, I mean, you're the photographer, so what do you think? Like, but I appreciate that because like. It gives me a little bit of creative freedom to be like, dude, I see what you're going for, but like, what about this? You know what I mean? And and it's always just like way better than any idea that I had, if that makes sense. It, it, if if I were to do it alone, if I because I I don't make clothes, I don't make music, so I'm just there to like kind of capture your idea or the energy, and like I'll do that if you don't have any ideas, like specific ideas. If you're just like we can just do whatever you want, I'm like yeah, fuck it, yeah, let's I'll do it. But like if you come to the table with like, look, I have this idea, I have this location in mind. Like, do you think that would work? I'm like, oh, I'm already thinking of visions. Like I already have a whole idea in my head. You know, and I used to love. Uh, I noticed that having some sort of structure helps a lot with any form of art because I used to. Always, do, when I was in school, that was my thing, is I would write raps just for everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So if I had, let's say, I had to give a speech in class, I would have all these things I have to say in my yeah. speech. So I would bullet point everything yep. I need to have in my speech. Yep. And then now I can write a rap so easily yeah. because I know everything I yeah. have to incorporate in the yep. rhyme. Yep, so, and, that, and that goes back to, like, like, the, like, like I said earlier about, like, self-taught, everything like myself like i have but you have to take the lesson out of it yeah well yeah and apply it to a new lesson if exactly that makes sense. like or I, apply it to a new uh template or yeah, a new, a new idea or whatever yeah 100 yeah. percent. like everything i've learned in this six years of shooting it translates into my pictures like every little tip that i've gotten from every photographer or any video or any picture i see online or idea or whatever any concept they are all the the my my pictures now are the product of that yeah i picture myself as a sponge yeah like <laughs> exactly like you really like just soak up all and, and and that goes back to like being willing to to work with other creatives and hear and 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 not think like we said earlier like no one knows everything you know, nobody knows. You don't know it all. Don't act like you know it all. And if you don't act like you know it all and you can actually accept all that information, it's going to translate and it's going to do you good. Like, don't be, like, what's the word? Like, don't be picky about, like, what you, like, don't be naive, if that makes sense. I would say you know? just, like, maintain childlike wonder. That's beautiful. That is 100%. Like, don't take yourself too serious. Don't. Put yourself in any box because it's going to translate into your work, like, 100%. Like, that goes down to photography, music, clothes, like, anything. Like, don't put yourself in a box and allow yourself to be creative and do different shit. Yeah. And, and, and feel the that. The different or, shit's the best. It always is. Especially like, when people respond to the different shit that you... Because there, like, there's a rap that I did that's my most vile rap on TikTok... I was just fucking around yeah. trying something different. Yeah. That's gotten more of a response on TikTok than yep. anything else I've ever done yep. with hip hop. Yeah, and, and then, it just blows my mind. And when that happens, it's almost like encouragement to keep just being weird. Yeah, and just dude, doing weird shit. I rap like I did the Danny Brown thing. I was like, spit that shit and yeah. make your mouth dribble. <laughs> 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 exactly they man. Loved it. yeah bro so it's like it's just let yourself feel that and like don't be too concerned about like coming off as like what the fuck is he doing you know what i mean like yeah, people i think what it is uh, i heard jim carrey put it so well so long ago um it's in the i think it's in the man on the no 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 it's not man on the moon because that's the movie that he did it's yeah. in the documentary that netflix did about when he played andy kaufman 
before Man on the Moon. Yeah. And the thing on Netflix was called, I think, Jim and Andy, okay. The Great Beyond. Okay. I think I'm getting that right. And he said that he used to wonder before going to bed, like, what is it that people want to see when I go out and I perform? Yeah. Like, what is it they want to see on that stage? Yep. And then one day it just clicked. Yeah. They want to see the guy with no worries in the world. They want yep. to see the guy that has no restraint. Like, he's yeah. not worried about what he's doing yeah. because that's what they want exactly. in their life. That's what they want to be. Yeah. And, and, and it's like it, it, it opens people up, I think. So yeah. to see that. That kind of reminds me of Jack Black. You know, yes. Jack Black is like the embodiment of that. Like, you could literally, like, you could tell he's doing what the fuck he wants to do, and it works, man. Like, like, just... You couldn't even tell him that... <laughs> no, you, you can't could tell him shit. Guy. You can't tell him shit. But it <laughs> works. Like, really, over the past, like, ten years, he's really leaned more into it. But, like, I mean, he's just so free, and he knows he knows him, you know? And it's so inspiring or, to see Or, um, like I that. mean, another great example, Robin Williams. Yeah. I mean, that inspires me a lot, yeah. Robin Williams. Yeah, Robin Williams, man, dude. He, I don't really know too much about him or haven't really seen too many of his videos, but I've seen a lot of his stand-up from back in the day. And, I mean, especially in the time he was doing it, like, it, it's kind of like a middle ground between, like, that old-timey, like, like super, like, showy comedy, you know what I mean? Prop comedy and shit like that. But, like, finding your lane and, like, and like enjoying that, being in your lane, and like just knowing what you want and like what you what you want to put out is the most organic, beautiful thing you can do. Well, like, dude, it's so organic that that wild prop comedy is what made him genie in Aladdin. Yeah, they yeah, saw that and was like, yeah, that's genie yeah, right there, exactly. <laughs> and so, and like without that, like if he wasn't willing to do that and be a little bit different, like we wouldn't have Robin Williams, you know? Exactly. Like, and there's so many artists like that, like fucking. Tyler, the creator, is the biggest inspiration to me. Like, I, I mean, he's my favorite artist of all time because, like, he literally lives on that. Like, do what the fuck you want to do. Like, it, it, it don't worry. You all, you, we, we're, we are here for a blink of an eye, bro. Like, it's not that serious. Don't take yourself too serious and just enjoy this shit while you can, and it's going to work out. Like, I'm a very big believer in, like, destiny and fate and just, like, letting things come to you. And, like, I think that all comes in hand, like, comes comes into the conversation when you talk about, like, just doing whatever you want to do because it's always going to work out. Like, I always tell myself, like, with anything, like... Bills, fucking any plans I have for the week or like a shoot or anything, like I literally am always like, it's always going to work out no matter what. Like you figure it out, you work it out, and it always goes better usually than you want it to. And if it doesn't, then it's a lesson. You know, you can learn from that. If it doesn't go how you want, like you can look back and be like, well, why? Like what went wrong? And a lot of the times it's out of your control. It's something that, you know, you can't control. And like, I saw this quote, and this guy was like, I can't remember exactly what he said, but he was like, uh, he was like, I stopped getting mad about stuff because, like, I'm either going to figure out what make what is upsetting me and fix it, or I'm not going to figure out, and there's nothing I can do about it, and I'm nothing's going to, you know, I can't, my life is going to be the same. Like, and so I really just let a lot of stuff come to me, and, and just, like, whatever s screams, like, go do this or don't go do that, like, just follow your, your gut instinct is there for a reason. And I think that that's something to really follow. Like, like if you know that a certain shoot is going to go really well, you feel that and you go do it because it could not go well or it could be the best thing you ever did, you know? And so just b b moral of the story is believe in yourself. Fuck what other people think, really. Like, that's a whole big thing for me. Like, fuck what other people think. Do what you want to do. It'll work out. This is a new one I came up with. I'm proud of this one. <laughs> I come up with a lot of these quotes. I love it. I should make like a one of those nice Facebook pages yeah, for moms yeah, yeah. and just put them in front of a cloud background. <laughs> yeah. But um, a life worth lived is a life where one's intuition is not in tune with the universe. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, always follow your intuition, but follow your intuition where... It, it, your intuition can get you into some tricky places. Very true. Like you can't, 100%. You, I, that's why I used to all just say follow your intuition, but I realized that's not everyone. It's a little reckless too. Yeah. It can be a little reckless, and it can be, it can, it can get you. Like you said, it can get you into some shit. But like, 
But but when it's in tune, mm-hmm. like when you're like like what you're describing, when you can feel these things lining up, yeah, that and it, you just feel it. Yeah, it's in the, tune universe with the universe will tell you. Follow the universe that. will tell you. 100%. Like you feel the universe yep. going with you. Like some you, people's intuitions, like yeah, yeah but that's like, way up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's like you with Chicago, bro. Like yeah. I mean, I that's gotta be daunting. Like that's gotta be like I I can't. I've always I've lived here my whole life, and so you know what's crazy? It's not. Really? In my brain, it's like it's. It, I'm what I'm thinking is, I've never want, felt something so strongly in my really? soul before in my life. Really? Yes. That's got to be a great sign, then, dude. Because like it, it, it's that's kind of how I am with the with going to school. Like, I mean, I could literally like I, I was the worst school, school kid in school. Like, I literally I did horrible. Didn't apply myself at all. So like, if I went back and told me. Ten years ago, when I was sixteen, like, hey, we're going back to school. Like, he'd be like, "What the fuck are you doing, man?" But like, something is just telling me to take it to that next level with just like getting. In, in a lot of a lot of people will be like, "Well, going to school for film is is pointless because you can learn all that stuff on YouTube." And it's like that's a hundred and thousand percent true that you can learn a lot of sh- shit on YouTube. But I think surrounding myself with other like minded people in those classes is going to be very very beneficial for me. And I think just the the stuff I will be like I'll have access to because you can rent a lot of their equipment and and all that is going to be kind of what helps me more so than just, like, teaching myself at this point. So I used to say that same exact thing, but I've been coming to this uh, this realization recently. Yeah. Through the podcast, actually. Uh, shout out Crackalac. Super, super <coughs> duper awesome dude. Makes yeah. amazing content. I love him so much. Definitely sh- want every single artist to go check that guy out because he's got great wisdom. But, um... He was talking about how he used to think he could learn everything on YouTube, yeah. but then he started reading books, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh my God, yeah. I've been robbing myself my yeah. whole life of yeah. all of this information. Like People write books for a reason. Exactly. There's it, still books and YouTube. Like, yeah, there's both, <laughs> but YouTube's free for a reason, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's it's a easily reason you've accessible. got to pay for the book. Yeah. It's easily accessible on YouTube, yes. Not to say that you can't find books on YouTube, right. or you can't find amazing informational or inf- informative content on yeah. YouTube. It's, it's very easy to find that type of stuff, but you're going to find it curated way better yep. in a book yep. Cause, because it's it's a whole different form of curation. Yeah. It's not like YouTube where we're all just throwing something on a wall. Yeah. It's like the book is something that's dedicating. This book got revised dedicating. four times, too. Yes. Like they yeah. sat and reread it how many times. Like We all know people that will like, you know, put out a YouTube video, and you can tell that they just... Didn't clip it, didn't trim it, didn't well, do anything to it. And if I want to teach somebody, if I, if I want to teach somebody and I'm, I'm that guy making that video, I'm just thinking right here, right now, huh, I know how to, I know how to get famous. Yeah. I'm going to tell everybody how to get exactly. famous. Exactly, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> that can come off the wrong way sometimes. And I also feel like it's like, to go on YouTube and to, to really learn as much as you can on YouTube, you got to you got to be on there for like you, uh, you got to stay very committed to like let me find this playlist and let me watch like all of this you know what i mean like it's hard for me to go like get an idea for something for like photography or whatever and go and find it on a channel m- rather than just going and experimenting and figuring it out on my own or reading a book or yeah. what i was getting to school yeah. cuz school is curating it in the same way that a book would exactly. and that's what i was always getting wrong i was yeah. i mean i know that <laughs> How I actually, you know what? I wasn't getting that wrong. I just never got the curating thing right. Because what I used to say is that they streamline it better. Yeah. Because it, that is what it is, too. It's like rather than getting this information with this, like you said, how am I going to find this specific stuff? Yeah. School's streamlining yeah. all of that for, you're paying for it exactly. for a reason. Exactly. They're, they're making it easy yeah. to learn. Yeah. And, so. they, and they just did that same course last semester. Like it's the <laughs> yeah. same thing every time. You know what I mean? They know what they're, they have this criteria and this is what they want to teach you. Like the main reason I'm going is for film editing and, or video editing. And, and there's literally a dedicated class called video editing, like a video editing class. And that's like, I talked to this girl outside the local one day and she was just talking to me about photography and stuff. And I told her that I was going to to school in September and she literally was in the classes that I'm going to be in and I was like dude tell me everything and she was like they're going to teach you Adobe Premiere um, like uh, Premiere Rush and then I think Sony Vegas too but uh, she was like if you learn all three of those like you could get a job editing wherever and I was like dude 
you're making me feel so much better about this decision because I've been so on the fence about going to school, especially for something like, you know, video, because like we said, you could learn a lot of that stuff on YouTube. But like, I really just was so unsure about it all because like, and it's not like I'm like spending a, mu a bunch of money to go do it. Like if you're over 25, you could do this uh, thing called the Michigan Reconnect program where you go to school for free. You just pay for books. Oh. And so it's not like I'm taking like the biggest investment on myself, but like, like I said, I fucking hated school. So it's like going back to school and getting myself to go do that is big for me. And so it's like, if I can handle that and I actually learn something from it, then I know I can do whatever. You know what I mean? I think taking the stuff I learned this, this winter in these classes is going to really just change a lot for me, or at least make me realize what I have and take it more serious. Because like I said, I just two, maybe two years ago, I started really believing that I could kind of do this shit. And so it was, for the longest time, I was not taking it that serious and just kind of doing just bullshit. And it just was not really translating. But like once I started being like, okay, like, Believe in yourself and go all in. Like there, here we go. Is this the is this the corny quotes podcast tonight? Like that's it like, always is. That's what I'm doing. Like I don't know. I, I really, don't worry about it. They they motivate me in a weird ass way. But like I heard this fucking this video and it was like uh, it was I think it was Steve Harvey. <laughs> he was like he was like somebody asked him what he what he did to get as big as he is and how like what it takes to get there, and he said. However many years ago when he really started doing it, he was like I just told myself I had to jump. Like you just have to jump, take that, take that dive, and like go basically take, put all the chips in on yourself, and it's gonna pay off if you truly put all of it in. Like that's a hundred percent how I live. Like if I'm not gonna be all in on something, I know that it's not gonna be its full potential. You know what I mean? And and I've realized that. Like I, I'll like I'm taking time off of my regular fucking job to to do, you know, what I want to do, which is pictures and stuff. And so once I do that and I really just take that risk of like, well, damn, I, I need that money from work. Like, but if you just believe in yourself and realize like this is going to work out, it shows, bro. Like it really, really does. Like, I, like I told you, I got out of a, out of a long-term relationship a couple months ago and genuinely, like, I'm not kidding. I could show you the dates. It's, genuinely my favorite work I've done has been since that breakup. And so, like, just believing in yourself and believing everything's going to work out regardless of your situation is so key for success, if you ask me. Like, Yeah, I think people struggle to view themselves outside of themselves in that way. Like, yeah. th view themselves in their potential form, I suppose. Yeah. Like, what I can be rather than what I am. Yeah, exactly. And that's, I think that's what stops a lot of people. Yeah, and, like, it stopped me for a long time, too, because I was, like, I was, like I said, comparing myself to certain people and, like, you know, for a long time, not taking it serious, I would, like, expect better results that I was getting and I'd be like why am I not why is this not what I wanted it to be yeah. and, and, and it, it, it boils down to like you can't expect it to just come overnight you can't expect it to just be like ever you know people have some people just have it which but but that applies to like believing in yourself and knowing you have that and, and leaning into it well the people who <coughs> I have to imagine that most of the people who do that the best are the people who are thinking that way because otherwise how would they even be able to go out and act like that like yeah. how would you be able to make good art unless you're the person that's thinking of yourself as a person that's making good art yeah yeah a hundred percent bro like like it's i once <laughs> which is this this kind of almost contradicts that in a weird way but uh waka flaka once said he was like i think my music sucks and i was like how can you say that but still put out bangers. Like, I fuck with Waka Flocka so heavy. I love Waka Flocka, but, like, it well, was just crazy to think that he, like, he's like, I don't even give a f Like, it was like he didn't care about his music. Like, and it's I like, think it's a self-critical thing, too, though. Like, I've, I was thinking about this the other day, where how much of my... Because I'm very self-critical in the sense that I'm always thinking I'm not releasing enough music, I'm not yeah. putting out enough podcasts, I'm not making enough music videos. I can make a list of all the things yeah. that as a creative, I'm not doing this thing enough to be present in front of a captive audience, which yeah. is online. Yeah. I need to be doing all those things. Exactly. So it's very easy to fall into that thought pattern, but 
I was just thinking, like, should I stop? Should I tell myself not be so hard on myself? Or does that contribute right. to what makes what yeah. I do work? Because yeah. I am being hard on myself. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe Waka Flocka telling himself his music sucks. <laughs> okay, and I see what you mean. It's actually good for yeah. his music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. He's think he's he'll hear the song that he made a month ago and be like, oh, this shit sucks. Yeah, yeah. But, like... <laughs> he just doesn't care. And that goes back to, I think, like... like like I said earlier about like comparing myself to people, I think that for for a long time, I think it b- kind of brought me to where I am now. Because yeah. like you comparing myself to other people, like it made me realize like I would slowly, slowly start not doing that or like not trying to emulate other people's work, and I would realize like what my kind of aesthetic is, and which is like I think every photographer. Like, pictures are pictures, but you can tell. Like, I could look at a a cryptic filth picture without his name attached to it and be like, is this crypt? Like, you can get that, like, vibe from someone's picture without even seeing it because, like, like, uh, once I stopped comparing myself to other people, I found what was my aesthetic, and I just leaned more into that, and it's just gotten better and better and better and better. But I wouldn't have gotten there without the trial and error of like, no, I my pictures are not like this person's. They're not like this person's. They're not like this person. So stop trying to emulate it. Just do what you do, and it 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 shows. You know, it'll translate into some good work. Like if you just do what you do, and not worry about trying to, not even like not even trying to emulate it and make it look like someone else's picture, but trying to get that level of like. I don't even know how to word it. Like, not trying to, like, emulate what it did, what it made, pe- how it made people feel when they see the picture, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, I, if I stopped, if I stopped trying to do other people's work, like, mine was, mine got better, if that makes any sense at all. Like, as soon as I started to realize, like, no, you have your own vibe of, in your pictures, you, it, it you, you get better at it. Like, I know exactly how, like, I'll see a picture without editing it, like, just a raw picture, and I'm like, I already know how I want to edit this. You know what I mean? And, like, once I realize that, it just comes so naturally. It's just so much easier. It's easier now to edit. It's easier for me to get what I want because I'm not trying to make it someone else's stuff. I'm trying to make it me. And, like, that's the easiest. Like, how it's easier for you to make a song that sounds like you than trying to emulate, like, any other artist. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost impossible. <laughs> so my latest single... Shout out my song, basically. Actually, when this podcast comes out, it won't be my latest single, Wink Wink. But basically, just came out as we're recording this. And the the chorus goes, Ain't nobody gonna take that away. I swear no one can tell me nothing. God's got no explaining to do. Mm. Um, I like that. if If you told me how to say, if you explain, I could fake it and love it. There's no me if I'm basically you. Damn, bro. It's like you wrote that for what I was just talking about. Like, because that's literally, like, exactly what I mean. Like, it's it's just the, the, the only way you can do this shit is just be you. Because yeah. it's just not going to work out if you try and do it any other way. If you just believe in what you have, like, you, like you're doing in Chicago, like I'm doing with going to school. Like, if you just believe in that and really, really believe in it. Because I don't think people really, like, you could say, like, oh, you believe, I believe in myself. But, like, really doing that is, like... Way deeper than just saying. A lot that. of the time, they're talking to themselves. Yeah, they're yeah. telling themselves they believe in themselves. Yeah, they're not like, actually. A lot of the time, when you say it out loud, that's the giveaway, right yeah, there. Yeah, you're like, you don't, dude, if you really believe in yourself, yeah. you shouldn't even have to announce exactly. it. Exactly. So if you just do it, just go out there and do it. Like, shout out Nike. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just do it, man. Like, it really. Well, and it works. The reason out. I wrote that song, man, is because. I mean, I have always felt this way and I feel like I just finally found a way to put it in my art and I feel like it's kind of partially my purpose in the world is to shine a light on others and to help others understand how to shine a light on themselves I suppose Mm -hmm. like to me that is the best possible thing I could do with my art is just I mean if anything the whole baseline goal is just to affect as many people in a positive way as possible but to me, that's a targeted way to do it, is to just give people a reason to believe in themselves. Right. And I think there's a whole lot of none of that right now. There's yeah. a whole lot. Of, it's, it's, I think there's always a whole lot of none of that because people are naturally negative creatures yeah, in a lot I of ways. There's a, there's a lot of hating, if that makes sense. Like, there's a lot of, like, 
like putting other people down to try and gain off of it, if yeah. that makes sense. And it's just, it's ugly to me. Like, I don't believe in that at all. Like, it's not going to get you anywhere. It's almost going to put you off from some circles, you know what I mean? And so if you're just accepting of, of the situation that everyone, like, dude, we're in Flint, Michigan. We are in Flint, Michigan. Like, it's that you could say that and take it for how it is, but there's so much creativity here. And it's, like we were saying, it's shining more and more every year. But, like, it's just nasty to me when people put others down to try and, like, uplift themselves. Like, because there's, there's, a, there's a way easier way to do it, which is including everybody, working together, and doing your own thing with other people, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, like, like, getting around other creatives is huge, like I said, because... Like well, you, usually when people are putting other people down, they don't spend a lot of time around other creatives. Yeah, and that's, yeah. They're, they're in a bubble and they don't even realize exactly. they're just making like, their bubble it, it, tighter. And you're taking yourself too serious. Like yeah. it's not that serious. It's not everyone. I think like because I used to kind of think that with certain like you know local photographers, I would think that they wouldn't really take me very serious because like I just wasn't taking myself serious for a long time too. But like. It's not that at all. Like, I got to know a lot of these guys, and, like, a lot of them, like, they want to see so much success out of Flint, regardless of if you're in the same lane as them. You know, they just want to see people successful, and that's all that matters, I think, is at the end of the day. It's like, you ain't going to get nowhere by putting other people down and trying to shit on them and then be like, but look what I did. Like, it's fucking gross, dude. Like, fuck you. Like, it, it's, it's, it doesn't work and it's... You can't be a professional hater. No, no, not out here. <laughs> not in most places, really. Yeah. I guess uh, there's a... There, you, yeah, you could pull it off. I guess you could pull it off just not in Flint. You're right. Yeah. There are places you could definitely yeah. be a professional hater. Yeah, there's... there's I mean, Anthony Fantano. <laughs> <laughs> you got a beef with Anthony Fantano? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Anthony, come on. Yeah. Uh, this is my this is the first time I'm shouting him out on public on a public video in front of an audience. I'm doing it. Anthony Fantano, you, me, you two boxing match. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. You're probably I don't even think I'm in your weight class. I don't care. I'll still fight you. All right? I'll slap your bald head right now. <laughs> That's what it'll sound like when I slap your bald yeah. head. Like yeah. that. But yeah, so I think it it just comes down to like just doing, doing you and well, not. I was, um, I was getting to something. Yeah, with yeah the, go ahead. So, for me, the first time I figured out how to do music, I never even questioned it. I never even thought, do it like someone else. Yeah. I always thought to do it like myself. Yeah. And when the first time I picked up a camera, I thought, how? What do I see through this camera? Mm -hmm. I never thought what would someone else see and how would someone yeah. else take this picture. I didn't even care. Yeah. It was always. What is my vision? Yep. And how can I portray this through this camera? Exactly. We, it's always been that. And and I didn't even realize that's like this is why I wrote the song, because I didn't realize that people have so much trouble seeing that until I grow up more and right. I just see more and more of this it, it's almost like a loss of innocence. Like people yeah. just don't they they're taught not to believe in themselves because they've had so much shit happen yeah. to them that they just don't even think they're worth believing in, and it's a sad thing. Yeah, like no, dude, you, you, whatever you do, only you can do. Yeah. Like that shit is exclusive. Exactly, that's just you. And I see it through everybody. I see it every single human I ever see. You can't replicate that human. You can't do that human again. It's impossible. Yeah, you can't do it. Yeah, and that is a beautiful thing in itself. And if you're making art, like, just pour it all into that. Exactly. Just do that. Yeah. Like find your place yeah. to put all that and, shit. And don't trip about, like, if it doesn't work out immediately. Because yeah. that was a big thing for me. I was like, well, this isn't, I'm not doing, you know, I'm not getting the work that I wanted to get at this time. Da -da 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 -da. Like, it's going to come. It's going to get there as long as you really believe in it and stay dedicated to that and, idea. And, and that can't happen with all that comparison and yeah. all that, like, Oh, but I'm not this guy. I'm not exactly. this guy. No, like you're not. No, you you're not. Are. And you never you're will right. be. Exactly. And you, <laughs> you never will be. be. Exactly. And you never will be. And that's one thing I had to I had to get rid of for a long time. Like I would be like, like I would, like for the longest time I was like I was like, there's no way people will take me serious in the you know photography game or whatever because I didn't go to school or anything like that and da 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 da. da. Dude, I've found out most photographers out here do not have formal education in it. Like, they did the same exact thing I did. They just picked up a camera one day and just shot, 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 shot as much as they could, and now they're there. Like, 
it, it don't it doesn't happen overnight with or without formal education on anything you know like it, you're not gonna just people are naturally talented at stuff you know and i think that's the thing that you need to realize like if you have at least any interest in something and getting better at something you can get better at it and and it can start to show in your in your your work but just thinking that it's going to come overnight uh, or or you just have it and you just randomly picked up a camera and you're going to be god tier at it like it's just it's like the craziest chances of that happening you know what i mean like literally so, one in like 10 billion yeah like it's I, how i put it is everybody has a different starting point but we all have to like go up from there exactly like not everybody can do everything the yeah. best way it's just not true. It's but not. Some people are better than other people at yeah. certain things, but we can all improve. Exactly. And yeah. and it goes back to 10,000 hour theory. Like, I really genuinely think you can do anything in life. I really genuinely believe you can do absolutely anything if you put your mind to it and you believe in yourself, which is, which is deeper, like we said, deeper than just saying that, but like actually going all in on it, like, like straight up, like. If I really gave a fuck back in the day and, like, really put, like, dying work, like, hours into it, I could have been on, like, a semi-pro football team. Like, (laughs) genuinely. I really think that because, like, I believe that you can do anything. And, like, I think that that's so important, especially for anyone trying to get into something that they have even, like, an inkling of a, like, a, a want to get into. Do it. Yeah, and 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 don't tell yourself the story that you can't. Exactly, dude. Because you're if you're gonna be the first doubter, who who, who else is gonna doubt after that? You know what I mean? Like if you're gonna doubt yourself, it's gonna show and it's gonna translate, and other people are gonna doubt you too. So if you can genuinely, and I mean genuinely, put all that aside and just be like, this is what I want, and I will do absolutely whatever it takes to get there. It's gonna happen. See. You say all this, and, like, for me, it's a tough thing because I would love to just invest 100% in the podcast, 100% in the music. But with the Chicago plan, I don't know if it's even feasible for me to do that without getting some type of job (laughs) along the way. 100%, bro. So while I would love to only do that thing and go 100%, because that is the life that I see for myself, Mm -hmm. it's a very tough thing because you have to be reasonable as well. You have to think, well... How do I get to that point where I can do yeah. that thing? And how do I not spend 10 million years yeah. trying to get to that And point? trying to balance both of them yeah. in, in, in the means of getting one of them to, to be the only thing you're doing. Like, tr- yeah. like, I know I have to work to survive, but I also have to work to be able to afford to go to do these things or go to buy this new equipment or, or get to that point where I can just do that solely alone like it's 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 a struggle man and like i like i was saying earlier with that that zeke post he made like like trying to juggle entrepreneurship with really anything in life is so it's so it's like stressful but it's like it makes you just want it more it's like a catch-22 like you're like why can't i just be there already but it's just not gonna ha- like well it, it's an unrealistic expectation because yeah. that's the real fucking world yeah the real world doesn't give a fuck exactly. that you wanted to succeed three mm-hmm. years ago it or, doesn't care it, no it doesn't and it also it doesn't it doesn't show the rest of the world the work you put in before where you got to where you're at so what i've realized recently too is i am not what i am in my brain to everyone else i'm yeah. just not a hundred percent but uh, but and it goes both ways. And it's hard people to see all, that yeah, it's from hard the other side. Because like, like, cause, cause it goes both ways. Sometimes people come to you and they go, dude, I love what you do, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh, my God, yeah. I didn't even think that yeah, anybody would say all right. this. But it's also like I see myself as what I am 10 years from now. They don't see that. No. They also, like you just said, they don't see all the stuff that led to exactly. what I do now. They only see whatever post I posted yeah. today. Yeah. That's all they see. So you don't really know a lot of the time that full story. Yeah. And, and there's so much. Yeah, and and it's it's hard to not like I a lot of the time as a you know, as I've gotten more into, you know, just creating and trying to make that my only thing, it makes you respect that grind so much, bro, cuz like I mean, it's ballsy to just quit your day job and just do this and just do whatever creative thing you're doing because like I know what that takes to actually go to your job and be like, all right, um, this, here's my two weeks. I'm about to just go do pictures. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's hard to, and it's, 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 
it's like like it's, it's but it's also very gratifying if you can do it if right? you can do it i yeah. mean that's the that's yeah. the, the dream yeah like my girlfriend's cousin she's a photographer and she's recently like started doing um weddings outside of the country and i'm like bro that's the dream for me you know what i mean to be able to travel the world doing photography or videography like is genuinely my end goal you know and so to see that actually happening for somebody around here even is like inspiring you know you could take it and you could be a hater like we were talking about and you could be like well why is why is she getting to do it da, 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 da. but it, it, you, you do you want people to be doing that when you get there you know what i mean it's no you don't you want people to be happy for you and to be people to support you and so you can take it as motivation rather than sitting there and hating and discouraging yourself. I think it's um, <coughs> it, it creates a better world when you choose to think that way. It's yeah. just just it's like a butterfly effect. It yeah. spirals outward yeah. in so many ways you wouldn't even expect. Yeah. When you choose to be the person that just looks at things in a more positive way. Yeah. Simple and, as that. And like it be like be the positivity that be be what you want to see the world be. You know? Like yeah. if 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 I were to sit here and act like but and by no means do i feel like this by any means but like if i were to sit here and be like my pictures are so much better than other people's da, 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 like you're gonna it's you're gonna stay in a box if like everybody we watch this podcast like who the fuck yeah is who the fuck is this fucking guy <laughs> yeah and especially coming from looking me looking up your pictures like hate yeah, watching them. <laughs> exactly and it's just gonna bring you hate and it's like rather than just being like dude i think that's so cool that you're putting out shit that you like to do and, and creating what you like to do and that's that's all that matters like at the end of the day, we're all just trying to make it out here, and we're all just trying to make something of ourselves. And so for me to sit here and put energy into hating on someone else's shit... It feeds right back. Exactly. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back at me tenfold. And so... I just stopped. I stopped that whole like. That's why I can't even do social media for the most part. It <sighs> sucks me into that stupid way of thinking yep. that I can't even. I can't even. And it's a struggle, especially being in the creative fields we are, because you almost have to do the social media shit. So, yeah, I just try to post and go. So I'm yeah, trying to get better yeah. at it. And so, and and it's it's hard to not be like I don't want to do the whole social media circus because we almost have to. And so it's I know. it's a I need struggle. A manager. Yeah. If you have a manager, you don't. Exactly. You actually don't. Yeah, you literally don't have to do it. I but. could literally just like do me all day, and he's just posting shit on Facebook yeah. for me. Exactly. That's what happens when you're. That, I think that's what most popular people that we follow. Yeah. Like the comedians we were talking yep. about before we started the podcast, like Theo Vaughn, yep. Joe Rogan, um, Andrew Santino, love Andrew Santino, uh, uh, Tom Segura. Yep. Burt Kreischer, yep. all these people, they're not thinking about putting out the content. No. They're just they're going doing, and appearing. Doing the content, here you go. Like, yeah. Do what you can with it. And and that's the thing. Like, it gets you to that point. Like, And that's more exciting because you almost, once you get to that point, you know that something's working. You know? And, like, like um, when you can invest in yourself. Yeah. And you can take more time and, and focus on what matters, which is just doing the work, you know? And yeah. so. And, well, and, and that's like why right before we started, I had to reach under and uncomfortably plug in a light. Yep. And uh, yep. it's funny. I say I need a tech guy and then I accidentally push the power button and the whole computer turns yeah, off. Yeah. First time that's ever happened. Exactly. But it's like, it's so funny that the comedic timing of the computer turning off right after yeah. I say that. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's exactly. literally illustrated the whole thing. But, but my focus, the whole point being, my focus is split. I'm, I'm thinking about doing all this. If I had another person who was doing that, we would, I'd be talking to you when you get here. Exactly. We're doing everything we're doing. We walk in, we sit down. We're good. We go. Yeah. It wouldn't have been like, hold on, let me plug yeah, this in. Yeah, hold yeah. on, bro, let me run out to my car, right. grab a cord. <laughs> it exactly. wouldn't be any of that. And so, it, and that, not even like there's anything wrong with me doing all those things. People respect that you're the guy. Like, oh, shit, he's really taking this serious. Yeah. They, they, they don't mind. What it is is that in my brain, in my personal experience, yeah. it's taking away from my focus on you. Yeah. My focus solely on you as a conversation, as it's me and you in this room, and that's the connection that's happening. Like, that's what the podcast is. That's where my focus should be, is just everything you're saying. Yeah. I shouldn't be thinking about, is this camera on? Exactly. Am I plugging? Is this, oh shit, is that still recording? Like, I shouldn't even have to do any yeah. of that. Like, in this sense, too. Every about 20, 30 minutes, I always take a little peek over there. Yeah. Maybe in every 10 minutes. Maybe make sure it's good. Yeah. Just to make sure it's good, because what the fuck if exactly, it's not? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And honestly, that's been a big thing for me. Mostly, I apply that to, like, keeping track of my scheduled shoots. 
because like I'll try and schedule, so, especially with my job, like I'm trying to like balance it with my, you know, the days I work and then the days that I have free and then the days that I just want to relax. Like it's, it's a lot, but like luckily my girlfriend has been a huge help in like helping me keep track. It's like, I'll literally, oh, yeah. Like I'll literally be like, what are we doing Saturday? And she's like, you have this so-and-so shoot. And I'm like, oh shit, you're right. I forgot. But to be able to just pass that off to somebody and have that help is like, it, it just saves you that brain power to just focus on what you want to do, which is for you, podcasting or music, and for me, photography and stuff. Exactly. And so, and, I, and then you're not, I feel like there's something that happens between even the context switching that goes. Yeah. Like if, it's when you're thinking about all these different things, yep. you can't, it, it fucks with the one thing. Yeah. If it'll stress you out and it'll, it'll translate. Like, like I was saying about that, that shoot with Jeannie, like I, I wish I could redo that because like it was my, it was Loki, it was my first studio shoot. It was my first time shooting like more than five models at a time. Like there was so many people there and like, if I had an assistant that could help me with even half of that or like, or, and, you know, anything that like I don't have to worry about other than just like taking pictures. Like if I could just focus on that, it would be, I, I mean, it would translate into my pictures. You know, you would be able to see like I have more time to focus on these edits. I had more time to focus on like what I want out of the shoot and da 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 da. And so it, it's stressful and, and it goes back to being out here and somewhere where it's, not the easiest to be a creative and not the easiest to, to get least the market. Yeah. With the market and everything. And like, it, cause you it, can, you can go out and shoot for sure. Yeah. You can go take pictures of whatever, but like to get consistent work and to, to, to get work that you could live on is, is, uh, it's stressful, but it's almost makes you want to grind harder. You know? Yeah. You got to use it as incentive. Exactly. It's the only way it's personable, personal accountability. Yeah. It's just looking at it through your own lens. Like what could I do to operate better in yeah. this scenario? Yeah. Cause otherwise, what are you doing? Like you're just making a reason yeah. for why you can't operate, yep. and why you, you can't get if, better. If you get discouraged, it's going to show and it's going to, and that happened to me a year ago when I stopped taking pictures for like six months, like I didn't take really go do any shoots. And it's like, it's almost, it's only doing me worse. You know, I'm losing that touch that if it, like I said, the 10,000 hour theory, like you got, you got to go do this stuff as much as you possibly can. If I like you to think of it like out. you got to keep the blade sharp. Yes. A hundred percent. Always keep it sharp. Always keep that. It's like, it's like a, it's like like old people doing crossword puzzles, you know. They gotta yeah. keep the brain going, you know. Like, but it really is. Like, it's like it's it's. It's just like it's the ten thousand hours, but it's also the consistency. Of exactly, those 10, exactly. Hours. You can't do one hour Tuesday and then the next hour on Saturday. That's what I was know? messing up with the podcast before, yeah, man. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, I'll just do like and, I'll do fifteen a year. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> and like Jeff Sky, he recently um, he made a post and he was showing how much how many followers he got after he dropped his spring cleaning project. And it was like the marketing for that did so much for him because there's a whole, I mean, the algorithm online, bro, like if you have to post like every day, if you really want to keep engagement going. Well, he's trying new things too with the mm -hmm. thing he was doing where he, it was like the spring cleaning like hiring yeah, sessions. Yeah. Yeah, those were funny. That was a great, and yeah. it was a cool way for him to do essentially what well, we do at this show where I bring different people on, I'm highlighting different artists, so it's a collaboration. Yeah, like it's a unique piece of content that's also exactly. a collaboration between two artists. It's it's exactly what I like to do. Yeah, I respect it a lot. I loved it's, it. It's exactly what we meant by like not hating, you know, and just giving people a platform to try and highlight like what, you know, another creative in the city. Like that's one thing I was saying. Like you could either he 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 could have just made those videos about him all day long, but he brought in these other people that he knew were he 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 enjoyed himself. He don't care if you like him. He don't care if I like him. He thought that shit was good, so he put it out. And that only that not only benefits him, it benefits the community. It benefits creatives in Flint, and it benefits that specific person as well. Like he easily could have just made those videos about him, and he didn't. And I respect the hell out of that. So shout out Jeff Sky. That dude's cool as fuck. Shout out Jeff Sky <laughs> all day. Shout out Jeff Sky all day. I He's been mentioned in this room many times. Yeah. Jeff Sky, I, I want to get him in this room yeah. before we're out into Chicago, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah. I've met him in person once, I believe. Shout out 60 seconds. Yeah. When I met him in person, that's what we did. Yeah. I, I was like, hey, man. You mind if I interview you real quick? Right. And I think I had questions ready just in case yeah. I had met Jeff's yeah, guys. So was, I was ready. And uh, I got, that was with the first season, beginning of the show. But uh, that was right around when 
uh, that one music video. I can't remember the name. Uh, Highway music, maybe. Mm. Uh, but it was the one with about Flint Water, and it had oh, yeah, Rick, yeah, uh, yeah. Rick Snyder in it yeah. and all that good stuff. It was a while ago, wasn't it? 2019? Yeah. 2018? Yeah, it feels like forever ago. Yeah, well, 2020 just kind of split the oh, whole universe Lord. in two. How did you do with that? <laughs> how, how was COVID for you? So, oh, man. I will say that for a little bit, I was great because it was right when I moved out of my parents' house was yeah. right when all that happened. So it was actually the perfect time to be stuck at home yeah. because I was in a new place. I was settling in. Yeah. but Almost forced you to get comfortable there. Exactly. Yeah. So in that sense, it worked. And I didn't have to work for a while because I was a server and all of a sudden I'm getting yep. unemployment. Just yep. for sta- like that was It was amazing. Yeah. But I think that in retrospect... It's clear that, like, somewhere between the end of 2020 and probably Mm mid-2021 to 2022, I'd say the end of 2020 to mid-2021 probably, yeah. But it it, it bled into later on from there. It was just bad. Just bad, 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 bad. Like, I don't even... I don't even want to associate with who that guy was. Yeah, back. yeah, I agree. I and I agree. think a lot of us went through that. Yeah, and I a think... lot of us don't know even know how to communicate it, and mm-hmm. we're all just kind of like recovering. Yeah, <laughs> like, like that, like ugly stepchild, like get back in the cupboard, bro. Like it, it's, it, I, I think everyone has gone through at least you either. This is the thing. I think you either did COVID right. Or you did COVID wrong. Like, there's some people that really leaned into COVID and they did real, like, fucking Bo Burnham. Yeah. Do you remember his Netflix special? The Inside? Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, that was incredible to me. And, like, you could have either went and did that or you could have went and sat and waited around for shit to change. And, like, I feel like I kind of did a little bit of mo- both because I did deal with a little bit of depression during all that. But, like, I think at the end of it, it made it, like, it kind of gave me a better appreciation for shit in a weird way. Like we could go straight back to lockdown and like yep. lockdown was cool for a little bit. Don't get me wrong. But like, I think at the end of the day, it was like, I, it's just not good for the spirit. No, that's, no. that's what I'm getting at. And that's, that's what I experienced. It's yeah. just, it just kind of kills. You need collaboration in your yeah. life. You need mm. that energy of others in your life and not a virtual version. You need the real thing. It, and the, that's that's a big thing where that was a big thing with um stand up comics. They yeah. were doing uh like like drive in movie theaters and stuff during that and like yeah, they were still doing comedy, but like they really like a lot of them have spoken on it. They were like people were like honking their car horns when they wanted to laugh and shit. Like like it got weird, like and then it sucks because you ha- almost had like in certain those certain aspects you had to take a break and there wasn't really much you could do. But I think it gives you more appreciation for, like, afterwards because, like... Well, yeah, now people are just... I think you see the world kind of uh, blossoming like a flower, mm -hmm. or at least the United States. Yeah. I mean, I just went to Chicago a few days ago, and it was not... It's funny because I feel like I got a false impression of the city when I first went there because it was 2020 and then 2021. And now that I'm there again, I'm like, whoa, this is nothing like the last summer. (laughs) Exactly. And, like, it's almost like... 2023 this summer is like the first year where everyone is like really really comfortable with going back out and doing the regular shit they're doing you Feels know great. Like, it does feel good and it's almost like like i don't know it, it's it's exciting and it's also like when this episode drops a month from now it's gonna be world <laughs> war four <laughs> right we're fucked we're at war with china but um yeah, I don't know. I, I I really have just been trying to be out as much as I can ever since all that because I feel like I missed out on stuff, even though everybody was inside. But like, shit, dude, we went to um, we had planned a family f- uh, trip to Florida. I want to say it was in twenty twenty one, and it was actually during a, a fucking hurricane. Like, oh, we, we went, we, bad timing. <laughs> I have. I'll, I'll show you videos and stuff. We have a whole. We had a whole family vacation down to Florida, planned and everything. And my dad was. I was like, Dad, you know this like peak hurricane season, right? And he was like, Ah, we'll be fine. <laughs> and it started looking like a cat, like a cat. His intuition too. was not intuitive. Yeah, to you yeah. Know <laughs> it started looking like a cat too, and I was like, "Dad, are you sure we should go?" And he was like, "We already paid." <laughs> I was like, "All right." <laughs> you can. So we that's went. not a confident answer. <laughs> no, I was like, "Dad, what do you mean?" And, and so we went, and he's like, "I'm not wasting my money." That's yeah, what he's saying. straight up. Like he was like, "I'm getting my money's worth." And I was like, "Dude, we could die." <laughs> if I paid for a hurricane, I paid for a goddamn yeah, hurricane. Yeah, literally. And so it was the most memorable family vacation I've ever had, but, like, 
It was still hell. So that's it was, hilarious. It was, yeah, <laughs> that's such a funny I, story. I ended, I ended COVID with a hurricane in Florida. <laughs> Holy moly! That's actually yeah. it's unforgettable though. No, I mean, can you? Is there any? particular moments from that trip that you can recount for us that were yeah you know? well there's a video of my brother online i could send it to you if you want but um he's literally like we're it's like windy as hell we're on the beach and i was like i was like ronnie what's going on right now and he was like we're alive now from hurricane sandy and i was it was named hurricane sally i was like hurricane sally he said who the fuck is sally <laughs> 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 my, I remember my niece, she was like six years old, and she literally was unbothered by this hurricane, bro. Like, literally could care less about a hurricane. She had like a piece of salami. She's just staring out at the ocean, just like... She didn't know what it was. She didn't care. Yeah, man. She was just having a good time. And so it gave me perspective, too. I was like, we're taking this too serious. Let me just have fun. Like, there's nothing. I can't stop this hurricane. Yo, you got any extra salami <laughs> yeah, over exactly. there? Right, right. So <laughs> I was like, you know, whatever. Let me just get drunk and have a good time. So, got Oh, y'all got drunk? Fuck yeah, bro. In a hurricane? Hell yeah, oh. dude. It was fun. I can't lie. I had, like, looking back, it sucked because we wanted to have, like, a regular vacation. Go do, like, jet skis and shit like that. No, that's even but, better. It, yeah, like I'll never forget that trip. So like, yeah, I don't know. It, that's it was, what makes it better. Yeah, so it was a good time. It really was. We made the best of it. Me and my brother got into it a little bit, but we made the best of it. It was a good time. Shout out Ronnie. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like the best trips are honestly the ones where you come out with the most memories. That's it. It doesn't even have to be positive. It's yeah. like what what in life is valuable? Does it have exactly. to be a positive memory every yeah. time? Like some of the things you grow and learn from the best are the negative yeah. ones. And so like I it's said, great to face adversity every yeah, now and yeah, then. Yeah, like, and oh, adversity can come in the form of a hurricane. A hurricane, bro. <laughs> yeah. A whole cat three hurricane. So That can be like, fun. Yeah, well, you can get and, a great video out of and it. And like you said about like the whole like, you know, some of the best memories not being like the best positive memory like or like th turning that turning a negative into a positive is kind of what i'm trying to say like like i said about that breakup i had bro like i'm not trying to keep bringing that shit up but like no i, I had the I, same I, exact I, experience yeah like it really made for me four, grow. four years four years, years? Yeah, yeah bro yeah same we, exact we thing worked and lived matter of fact it was on our four years that yeah. we had broken really up. Yeah. oh damn like right there i moved out on valentine's day so oh. I, I, feel, I feel you bro. dude I, uh, uh, no, actually, we broke up, uh, so our, it was right after the four years, yeah. and it was, we broke up on Christmas, oh that was my what it was. God. So, does that beat Valentine's Day? I think it might, <laughs> I think yeah. it might, honestly, because Valentine's Day is just like a Tuesday for me, usually, like, I didn't really, like, I mean, yeah, we'll get, like, flowers, we'll go to dinner, but, like, Christmas is Christmas, dude. Like, I love Christmas. And so, like, that would suck for oh, me, bro. That, that would be bad. rough. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was, like, it, double up, like, four years, and then, like, just a few days later, yeah. we really break up yeah, on Christmas. Yeah. Like, it was, like, a double breakup, yeah, you know what I'm saying? That bad, bad. But, but, but don't, I'm not trying to discount your fucking Valentine's Day. That's, no, that's no, no, pretty no, bad. Good, yeah. You moved out on Valentine's Day. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Like, it was just by myself. She was at work, and I was like, I'll just get my shit. Don't worry. It was, like, uh, it, was, it's, it sucked. And, in the meantime but oh, oh and let me just say this too let me just say this too something that really added that heartbreak so my whole life i waited for kingdom hearts 3 my whole life really? kingdom hearts 2 was like what i was a little kid yeah. i was like in fifth grade yeah. kingdom hearts 3 came out the jan the january after we broke up in december and then don't ask me how but i ended up in her house for like a month yeah <laughs> <laughs> Some things happen, my guy some things happen listen i was trying to plant seeds there all right <laughs> <laughs> so until, like, the, the game came out, I think, the very end of January, January 29th, if I'm correct. Yeah. That was the day that she started dating another guy. The, 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 the game came out, the midnight, and then the next day, I'm playing the game at her house. The first, I waited a decade. Well, yeah. This is my childhood fulfilled. Right. And I'm also going through all this trauma, and she mm -hmm. says, hey, I'm actually dating this new guy. You're going to have to leave my house. And I'm sitting here playing Hammer's Race thinking, like, you're ruining yeah, you're Kingdom like, Hearts. You bitch. <laughs> you're like, a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? It's fine. And and she's not a bitch. I love that woman so much. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I would do anything for her. No, I called her a bitch too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's just that, that, that experience, I couldn't discount it for anything. Yeah. And, and I think that it showed me how codependent I was emotionally at the time, the fact yeah. that I even reacted in that way right. and that it was so hard on me. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can pull from things well, like that. That's It's hard to see in the moment because it's such a dark yeah. place to be. And you don't... It's hard to conceptualize 
how your life will change when you've had things a certain way for so long. Exactly. So, that was huge for me. And like, I, I, I felt like really kind of like lost. Cause I mean, being in a, we worked together and lived together for four years. Like oh. we were literally like together all the time. And so once we broke up, it was like, what the fuck do I do out here? You know? But like, I just kind of started going back to what I like to do. Like being with my homies, definitely shot more, definitely took way more pictures and just like, I was like, dude, it's going to be fine. Like, relax. You know, like, it's not the end of the world. And it gave me such, like, it really, like, I really benefited a lot from that breakup in a weird way because... It makes you feel more independent in a it way. Makes you, it makes you realize, like, you can do shit just fine on your own, if not better. You exactly. Know? Like, and, and... And it was never dependent on this... It never, the, the person never... Like, they were great, and they were... They matter, and they did matter in your life, but they weren't a reason for you being you exactly like that's not yeah. it doesn't take away from you no and 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 honestly i think it was beneficial for both of us at the end of the day because like it almost felt like we could both like spread our wings and fly you know because i had yeah. been with her since i was 21 years old i'm 26 now like well we were like on and off at the beginning of it or whatever but like yeah like it was literally like five years of my life with this person and so it's like what am i gonna do but like you realize like how much you've grown in that time and those lessons you learned in that relationship, you will apply to life and you'll be just fine. Like, it, And you, hopefully you go into other relationships and do better. Exactly. Like what, what yeah. you, hopefully you can properly identify what yeah. ended that one. Exactly. Because it's always it, something. Yeah, there's always a reason and it's always, I, like I said, I believe in destiny a lot and just like letting things work out for what they work out for and and taking them for what they are rather than trying to like find a deeper meaning and stuff and like, like life is I feel like people take life way too serious sometimes in that aspect where like like you have to you have to grow after a breakup necessarily like you don't have to you don't have to leave a breakup and and be a totally different person you know like it, you could still you're still that person that was in that relationship you're just you're just single now dude like it's not that it's not that serious, you know. I don't know, man. <laughs> the next breakup I go through, I'm listening to some Dua Lipa and going to the club. <laughs> New me. Yeah, man. So it, it's it's been a long, it's been a really long couple months. I mean, we just it was February we broke up, so it's not like it was. It's not forever ago by any means, but like I've just grown a lot in that time, and I'm very appreciative of of all of everything that's happened since then. And you know, I'm appreciative of that relationship because it's. I mean, I was tw like I said, I was 21, and so I learned a lot during that time. And so for me to sit here and be like, no, it was wasted time or da 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 da, it wasn't. And it maybe I wasted, maybe it was wasted with that person, if that makes sense. But like, the person I am now is a better person than I was before. Yeah. So I can't be upset about it. Like I really. When can't. you aren't you with that, with, like like. You're you without that person, but you wouldn't be who you are today without that experience. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. For me to sit there, like, for there, for a minute, I was like, I wasted all this time, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, no, you didn't. You're good. You're fine. You didn't. It, yeah, it all matters. You're 26. It's not like you're... Like we were saying about art, man. It all adds to the equation. Yeah, Like, exactly. it adds to how you can equate properties. Exactly. It's, it's a mastery thing. Like, yep. what does that relationship add to the value of you as a human, exactly. how you look at life? Yeah. And, how do you? How does that affect things? Because yep. it matters. It all matters. I hate when people act like shit doesn't matter. No. Because it's like you're missing the point yeah. of these things. Right. Like like people who are just all like victimizing themselves. Like all this shit happens to me. It's like you're, you're never taking anything it, away from anything. And you're other. learning the wrong lesson. Yeah. You know, like you're taking it the wrong way and applying. And it's like. Like That's they not, broke up with me, and that, and then the whole story becomes that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like maybe there's maybe this was meant to be. You know, maybe this is what you're supposed to be going through right now because, like, it, like I said, nothing happens for no reason. I think there's a reason behind everything, and I think that that shows the most in like when you grow as a person. You know, like because you can literally you can either fold, like in that situation, and like turn bitter and evil or whatever, or you can just like keep it pushing. Take it for what it is and, and learn from that. Yeah, I like to say that the true show of character is how you act around people you don't like, but it also applies to situations yeah. you don't want to be in. Yeah. Like That's the real show of character. What do you do when you're in a situation yep. you don't want to be in? Exactly. Not in a situation you want to be in, because right. then you're going to be comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can act however. Yeah. It's what do you do when your back's against the wall? I, I, I like to think that I'm not much of a social person, but then I get into those situations where I do just push myself. Because I'm not, I don't... I'm I'm kind of introverted in the sense that like I like to be in places where I'm comfortable, 
but I do like to meet new people and stuff. And so like, I like to, like, I try to tell myself I'm not a people person, but then I get, I push myself to get out of my comfort zone and be comfortable with being out of my comfort zone. And it, and I'm like, what are you talking about? You love people. You have, you're having a great time. Like you, I'm, I'm very good with new people. Like, like I said, first time meeting you, we haven't stopped talking. Like <laughs> if I were to tell myself that like back at the crib, it'd be like, oh, you're, it's going to be awkward. You're not going to know what to talk about, da, 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 da. but it's just not the case, you know? Yeah. And so if you just push yourself to get out there and like get yourself to be uncomfortable for a little bit, it's going to be okay. It'd be easy to, for, I'm the same exact way. And it'd be easy for me to sit in a shell. And people are always surprised when I tell them that I'm that way because it's like I'm the guy that interviews people. I'm the guy yeah. that does the, the, the and, and people see me as this sociable person. Yeah. Like they confirm it for me. Right. And people are always like, wow, that was a great conversation. Like, yeah. And I'm just like, in my brain, when people aren't around, like I do appreciate myself and I'm just like, right. dude, people don't get the fuck this yeah. is. They don't know what's going on in yeah. here. I can't translate this. But, and I'll think that it's going to go wrong and I'll come up with reasons. Yeah. But then it's not that ever. Yeah. And it's very easy to just convince yourself that that shell is fine, that yeah. that vacuum is cool. Uh, then, but but then, it ain't, man. Right? But then there's always people that are like, like good to get around in that sense because they're gonna make you more comfortable most people are very accepting like yeah. i feel like most people like a lot I, th I feel like a lot of people think that most people are like judgmental or like will sit here and like think you're weird or something because you're outgoing or whatever like no like people like you're not too you're not too cool to fucking talk to people like you know what i mean like it's a it, false perception yeah, yeah like i don't think that people I think that it's a lot of it is just the divisive nature of social media and the way that the news portrays culture. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is just bleeding into the way that we're told to look at each other. Yep. And it's it's beyond just how we interact yeah. in everyday life. Because like you said, in real life, like in real life, just think about it for anybody listening to this. How often do you actually like run into somebody and just have a full on argument? Exactly. Or, or even just a even just a disagreement that could even have an insult. That doesn't happen. People don't even when you have a disagreement in real life, it's usually just like, oh, I feel this way. No, I feel this way. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Always, nobody actually wants to fight no. in the real world. No. So I unless think you're we, a shitty person, unless there are some shitty people out there. Don't but that's get me wrong. Reflection of themselves. Exactly. And we and like that's a whole other thing. It's like it's not you. It's them. Yeah, yeah. So I think we just get this false idea of how. How many shitty people there are because yeah. we're told everybody doesn't yeah. get along. No, no. we social get media, along pretty well. Yeah, social media highlights that stuff way too much. And the news and and, and the news is the news did it before social media. Mm -hmm. That's why I make oh, yeah. sure to say that because yep. it goes beyond just the two thousands. I mean, yeah. we, we've been taught to dislike each other yeah. for a long time or focus on the negative. Exactly. Yeah, and, and uh, where where we should just be going the other <laughs> direction. And we that's should, not real life. Like if you go to any like Flint music event or whatever there's so much love there and so much just like just having a good time people just want to have a good time the rest of their life is like people are paying bills people are struggling with work people got kids like not that having kids is a bad thing but like no it, but it is but it, it is a be, it is a stressor yeah and so like most of the time if you see people out and about they just want to get away from that and they don't want to like you know they don't want to be fucked with you don't want to be fucked with so they're gonna mind their business that's one thing i've learned about living in flint as long as you mind your fucking business you're pretty much good like you know what i mean yeah. or with in my sense like i i like to mind my business in the sense that like like that doesn't mean don't go talk to people or don't go interact with others like go get out of your comfort zone but like just, just do that. Don't add, don't, don't reach too much. You know what I mean? Like, cause I'll like, I, you, I definitely have overextended myself sometimes and I've realized that it'll put people off. But like, if you're just like, Hey man, like speaking on like going up to a random person and taking a picture. Like I like, I love doing that because some people like, I'll literally be with people and they'll be like, did you even know that person? I'm like, no, I just thought their fucking clothes were cool. You know what I mean? But like in and out, I'll be like, Hey, I like your, I like your outfit. Can I take your picture? Boom. All right. Thank you. Have a nice day. And they're like, thanks to you too. It's so chill. It's always so chill. Like my friend, Austin. And people would think like you can't go do something like but that. But you can. They would think that most people would be like, no, don't and, take my picture. But that's worst case scenario. They'll yeah. say no and you say, all right, thank you. Have a good day. And But I th I'm just saying like, I think that's what stops people is this idea. They're like, oh, I can't just run up to somebody and ask them you that. You can. You can. And most people, like you've done this a lot. Yeah. So what would you say your success rate is for that? 
honestly, like straight up, like like ninety percent of people are like, yeah, sure. And if they say no, most it's just of a the time, note. like when I went to New York City, like I tried to ask a good amount of people, and like I would say a solid like eight out of ten of them would say yeah. But well, like, especially New York, because yeah, they, 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 there's cameras and, everywhere. And, and, well, and then there's that, but the people that would say no, you could tell they're busy. And yeah, they're, oh. and they're like like bustling to somewhere. So not you know even I mean? like they don't yeah, want to uh, yeah, place like, to be. Yeah, there's got some something going on. Or or there is the case that some people just don't like their picture taken. You were gonna say something about Austin with the photography. Well thing. Uh, Austin, I was with Austin in Chicago and he saw me he saw me going up to random people and asking for their picture and he was like, I couldn't do that. And I'm like, dude, yes you can. Like I promise you can. Especially you and like, once you do it a few times, that's when you realize. It's yeah, because that's the thing. We all can tell ourselves we can't. Yeah. it's like what we're talking about about showing up and yeah. just thinking it's gonna go wrong. Yeah. Like, am I gonna? I'm gonna walk up to that and, person yeah. and it's gonna. It's gonna what? It's gonna it's what? what? Like, What's gonna happen? They're gonna punch gonna you in the happen. face for asking for a picture? No, like. It, <laughs> It's it's just like they're like, gonna ruin your whole fucking life because you have yeah <laughs> no bro you're good like that that's one person like you could think of them as an NPC if you needed to bro like that person said no oh well they're just they don't care like they got stuff going on and like if they it say yes it could be a dope ass photo bro, you don't know I got some really cool pictures the last time I went to Chicago because I was just asking random people like you know what I want to start doing and I need to this is the hurdle I have to overcome because I think it's harder than asking to take a picture for the record just embarrassment wise yeah. I want to ask them, hey, you want to be in my music video? Like, can I have you in a TikTok with me real quick? That is, that's almost, but I don't even know if it's that. It's just more of a commitment. You yeah. know, it's easier to just take a picture, keep it going. To do a TikTok, they got to sit there, they got to do this. But if they're, I mean, most people, as long as they're not busy, they'll say yeah. Because, I know. Because, like, they're like, oh, shit. Like, and, then, and most of the time when you ask those people, they don't regularly do TikToks or social media like they're that. They're excited about so it. So they're like, oh, shit, yeah, hell yeah. Because so, I would just be like, I would be me and some random-ass Mexican dude, and I'm, like, yeah. rapping my song right at him. Yeah. That's great content exactly, right there. Exactly, bro. Like, <laughs> That's it, all I got to do is ask. Exactly. And it's just getting past that that feeling of like, no, they're not going to want to. Like, okay, and? And if they do, I made their day. Exactly. And it made me some good content. So they're thinking, they're, they go home to their wife, this guy asked no. me to, he rapped yeah, at me today exactly, for a exactly, TikTok. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> he so, gave me his business card. Yeah, yeah, and so like that's actually really interesting because I want to start doing stuff like that where like I've had this idea to go down to Detroit like once every other weekend or so, even just once a month. And get like a GoPro or a fucking just my phone camera and put it like in my like, like a shirt pocket and just go up to random people, record me asking to t I've seen it on TikTok before. Go ask them if I could take their picture and then at the end of the TikTok post the final picture. And then I post Those the whole do really well. the post the whole interaction as well. It's such an easy way to get traffic to your photos and also get to know people. Well, and, you know what's nice about it is it's telling a story with the photo exactly, as well. Like you're exactly. telling the entire story yeah. of the photo and it's kind of hard to do that in yeah. video format. And, and then it's it's showing kind of like what you saw in that person and then the final product of what you saw. And it's what you like to do yeah. as a photographer. Exactly. You were describing that as your process. Yeah. Like literally, that's what yep. you try to do so is I, walk up to people and capture their yeah, essence. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's so easy to do that and, it, and most of the time it's like I'll see someone's like a really cool outfit they're wearing and like or just like a really interesting person that to look at you know what i mean like very like there's certain people that like just look like look cool as fuck to me so i'm like dude let me take your picture so it's fun you like, so you've been to chicago twice now yep. there, if you walk around there during the summer you'll find a lot of i photo know ops, bro dude. and 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 they're all willing to do it like yeah. i swear to god that's like, why they're they were, dressed like that so there was this girl i can show you the picture again but like there was this girl they were literally just like it was like downtown chicago and they were smoking a joint like in this like kind of alley almost and i like stopped and like turned back around i was like dude can i just take this picture really quick and they were like yeah sure and i was like just keep doing what you're doing took their picture i was like all right have a nice day Kept it pushing. One of my favorite pictures I've ever gotten. Yeah. Yeah. So I know I know that feeling. Yeah. It's like you're walking, you look, oh shit. Like you like, see the photo. You're like, oh, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you have to go exactly. take it. <laughs> and that's how a lot of my shoots are. Like I don't I've like I said, I've only done one studio shoot. All of my shoots are outside. Everything I do is outside. Normally just a naturally occurring thing happening. And I'm like, just stay there. Just let me take, just keep doing what you're doing. Got it. <laughs> Move on. Like it's just it's 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 fun. It's exciting. It's what I used, what I used to do for photography is I have it. The, the Instagram's still there. It's called Lent Lens Photography. Mm -hmm. It's just that I the only reason I stopped is because I it's that segmenting your brain thing. It's how much can I put into exactly. these different trades if yeah. I really want to put like I could be a photographer, but that's a lot. Of, yeah. 
mastery and a lot of and a lot of like switching your lane because you've you've yeah. decided the lane you want to do yeah and if you wanted to switch that up it's like you could but I don't know this telemarketer anyways um answer it great right, right. You're content, dude. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, like it, it would like once you figure out what you want to do, it is kind of hard to switch into something like I'm trying to do with video. I've been so comfortable with doing pictures, yeah, that it's like almost scary to think about going more and more into to video. They contribute to one another though. That's they the, go hand in hand. There is crossover, they do, yeah. and that's what's nice about. Learning but I this. also heard one time I can't remember who told me they said master pictures first. Mm. Get get absolutely mastered at pictures before you even try to do video. I could explain why that makes sense because. Videos are moving pictures. Yeah, and, and it's, that. it's such a wider array of things to consider, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like with a picture, I got to do the framing, the lighting, the pose, the composition, all of that, whatever. I have that figured out. And then like, I try to even think about doing like a music video or something, and I'm like, I don't even know where I would start. you know. And I think that's a big reason why I want to go to you know, school for it, because like, it would just kind of give me an idea of how it's already done. You yeah. know, like rather than trying to figure it out on my own and do it my own way, which is fine, but to get a template and get an idea of like people that have already done it and explain to you how they do it and shit like that, like it's, it would be way easier and way less stressful and scary to me, you know, cause like switching a video right now, like people ask me like, Hey, do you do video too? And I'm like, I, I hate telling them no, because I know that like I could, it's just such a big leap. You know, it's a it's a big change for me because I'm just I, I have such a process already with the pictures. I know exactly what I'm gonna do when I get home with these pictures. When I get to like video, I'm like, cause I've never done it. I'm like, where do I what do I do? I don't know. Like I don't know. I don't think it's I I, I think this is one of those things where you're creating a barrier because yeah. I don't think it's actually gonna be as difficult as you're. Making I'm sure it out it's to not. Be. It's it's probably just like how like I was saying with people like going and asking random people for pictures. Like it's not as big a deal as you think. Yeah, you're probably gonna actually like, like I said, they'll probably feed into each other probably more than you would even realize. Yeah, you're gonna be like, exactly. oh, I actually know how to do all this stuff exactly. with a camera. Yeah, this isn't that bad at all. Yeah, like oh, so I just have to. Oh, like you're just getting yeah, all these dots yeah, are going to start yeah. connecting because so. you already know half the stuff. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I think if you can pick up a camera and you know how to operate it, that is a big start. I guess you're right. Yeah, that's true. It, that's it's a true. huge start, but it's also the visualization aspect. Mm -hmm. Like if you've taken a lot of pictures, you know how to visualize. Right? Yeah. You know how to properly visualize. Yeah. You know how to set something up and make it what you see. And that is what directors do. That's yeah. what people with the vision do. That's yeah. what a videographer will definitely have mm -hmm. to do, especially an expert. Yeah. So, I mean, all that stuff. Yeah, I've never heard that before about learning photography first, but that's it. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's learning the fundamentals of just what makes a photo work. Yeah. And then figuring Applying out. Applying all of that to this new moving picture shit which yeah is, it's 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 exciting don't get me wrong i think I, you would blossom in that, in that field, i know man. i will because like i i've just known how fun it's been learning all of this in the last six years of of doing pictures and now i get to do video like it's i'm like relearning it all again it's gonna be so fun like it's it's, yeah. it's, it's exciting and you, you can know? always do both too that's the oh yeah thing. like it's not like i'm gonna stop doing pictures i love 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 photography way too much to just do video but and that's why i kind of want to like i'll be hesitant to do like music videos and stuff because that's just not necessarily what i want to do well i mean there's a lot of um there's a couple people who do short films around here shout out jermaine davis i know i've heard of jermaine yeah yeah, yeah. So he does a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, I think there's there's also is it Buick City Films? I think that yeah, might be what I've it's heard called. Of them. There's also a there's also a, I don't know if it's like a film company or a film production company or whatever, but they do uh, they did that that movie that they shot in Flint like a year ago. Did you hear about it? It was Somewhat. like a, it was like a like a horror movie kind of, but I, I I didn't I didn't really know much about it, but like. Yeah, like you, it's possible to do that shit out here, man. It's not impossible. Like I feel like a lot of people think that you only have to do videos or, or uh, like live music videos or like music like music videos themselves, and it's just not true. Well, like there's if, people who want to act too. Yeah, like there's 100%. a market in in all of it. Yeah, there's, it's not just rappers that need videos. It's yeah. actors that need movies. Exactly, and like, so, they're excited for you to cast them. Yeah, and and there's people that like I know that I've collabed with on certain things that like have been wanting to get, you know that that online presence of like I'm a you know I'm a rapper I'm a local music artist but they need 
the content the to content match to match it. Yeah. yeah. And so like I, that is it's like a mutually beneficial relationship. You know, I'm benefiting from it because I'm getting more clients through you and you're benefiting from it because you're getting really good pictures. And so it's like a win win. Yeah. You know? It's nice. It's really, it's been like, it's genuinely been like, like I always used to like, like back in school when they would ask like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Like I had no fucking idea. Like even like after, like that's why I waited till I'm 26 to go to college. Cause I knew when I graduated high school, I was like, I have no idea what I want to go for. So why would I go pay all this money not knowing what I want to do? And so it's just really relieving and exciting finding that thing that like I'm like all right you could you could probably figure out how to do this for a living you know and so this is the early 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 stages of it but like we both have like I'm sure we both have this vision of where we want to end up I'm imagining us both as caterpillars right now <laughs> <laughs> exactly though like and we ain't even cocooned yet like really <laughs> like we aren't even in the cocoon yet and I I know I'm not because I know like if I just started taking this serious two years ago with the little equipment, like, dude, I have a, like, when I was shooting before this one, I had a Canon T4, which is, like, 11 or 12 years old, Ooh. and, like, it was, I was getting really good content with it, but then I decided to, like, kind of go all in myself and got this camera, and it just immediately leveled up, and so if I keep, 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 keep doing that, like, where the fuck am I going to be, you know, like, yeah, cause it's exciting. You don't realize how many levels are above you until you've gotten above where you are. Exactly. It's kind of crazy looking down yeah, on where you were yeah, before. Like, like, I always tell myself that. I'm like, dude, if you could only show, like, like 19-year-old you, you know, when you were just kind of fucking around with a camera, like, keep going, bro. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Like, or maybe even just take it seri more serious right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it, it would be amazing. Like, I always think about, like, that younger version of me. Like, he, he'd be proud. You know, like I think about shit like that, and it's like almost, almost do it for that little nigga. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I do it for him. I do it for that dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's cool. It's just like, to it's, prove him right. Yeah. Just like to, you're just doing let it everybody right. know yeah, that like, he was onto something. Exactly. And like, I can't, I can't prove myself wrong. You know, it's more about, it's, it's more about proving it to me, because like I know, like I have like just this feeling like of what I'm capable of, and like I just know that. Something is going right. Something I'm doing something right. So I don't I don't know what it is. So just keep doing what you're doing. You know what I yeah. mean? And so just follow that intuition, that exactly, gut feeling. Exactly. Because it's hard to identify what yeah. that usually is. Yeah. I mean, that's why it, it's a strange thing, man. Every time I go to Chicago, I feel this gut feeling in my fucking soul. I yep. can't even explain it. It's, it's like just, jumping out your skin. Yeah. And 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 it's so far beyond. My conscious thought, yep. like, I can't even put into words what exactly it is, but I know it's reaching out to me. Yeah. And there's something about, like, if I follow that, I know there's something waiting for me at the end of that. It's like, it's like, like I said about destiny and like, like what you're meant to, like, like, like I said earlier about like the two most important days of your life, like being born and knowing why you were born. Like, I know it sounds corny, but, like, I think I was born to do picture, at least capture moments. I don't like yeah. saying, like, I was born to be a photographer. But, like, capturing moments and stuff like that and, like, being that, being there for, like, someone else's, like, good, big, exciting events in their life and stuff like that is yeah. so, so cool to me. And, like, seeing their reactions, like, I live for that stuff. And so, and it's cool. It's fun for me because it's, like, a very, like, like, like fulfilling feeling when you get, like, a good shoot in or, like, you, like, dude, there's, you could ask my girlfriend, like, I'll literally be editing a picture and I'm like, God damn, that's fucking fire. Like, I love it. Like, it's a great feeling, like, going from, like, like, an idea in your head and seeing it, like, fulfilled. Like, it's so, it's just instant dopamine rush. And so I can't. I wouldn't change it for anything. I, I, you ain't gonna find me working in no fucking factory. Like, <laughs> I can't. I would die doing that, bro. Like, I gotta, I gotta fly, son. <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I, <coughs> I can't. I don't feel more than I do when I'm creating a piece exactly. of art. I, 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 it's, it's. Like w even when I film these little short videos that I use to promote my songs, I'll do the chorus of that song I told you the lyrics of a little bit ago. Yeah. And every time I sing it, like I have to yeah. calm myself down yeah. afterwards because I work myself up. Yeah. It's it's such uh, it just, an experience. Yeah, but it just shows me. you that you're doing what you're meant to be doing. You know, yeah. at least at least right now, because like this this all could lead to other things. You know, like I mean. My my favorite part about um, photography is color grading. 
Yeah. And so, like, if I could genuinely, genuinely, if I could go from not shooting at all to, like, color grading films or some shit like that, like, that's a dream of mine. You know, like, if I'm not even touching a camera, like, just color grading shit, like, getting something to look, like, as, as aesthetically pleasing as you can is so, like, it's, it's such a good, it's, like, satisfying. Oh, I mean... All these videos I do that I just mentioned, they're all color graded. Yeah. It's actually wild when you look at the comparison before the oh, color yeah. grade oh, after. Yeah. Yeah. It makes the video, the original video, look like garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's almost, almost, almost like I have like a weird, like, because there are artists that like will straight up just take like a raw video and post that because it looks bit, but sometimes it'll look really, really good. Like, is what I'm saying. With like, a good lens, especially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have the equipment already, don't get me wrong, but Great like. Great lighting. Yeah, but like, it's. To go from, like, this just, like, almost basic picture and going in post and, like, touching it up enough and just, like, giving it that pizzazz, oh, bro. Oh, yeah. Like, it's so fun. I don't know. I mean, there's editors for everything for a reason. Exactly. And so, yeah. like, like I said, like, if right now, like, all I'm doing is, like, if the film classes leads to that, then I did something right. I did it right. What you know? I realized recently, man, I had a come-to moment, and I realized that my purpose in life, I feel like this is when I was reborn. Yeah. It was this moment. Uh, I realized my purpose can be encapsulated to shining my light upon others. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm meant to yeah. do. I I bring light into other people's lives yeah. through being myself. Yeah. And most people can't say that. Yeah. And I realize that. And the fact that I can even I even have the consciousness to recognize mm -hmm. that is a gift. And, and that's my purpose. I think this is just using that. Yeah. Using that superpower. Yeah. Because that if I squander it that, it's such a shame because i mean even you just asking me to come here bro is like really like i appreciate that a lot because yeah. it kind of like i'm not saying that like like i, I could name uh, thousands of other hundreds of other photographers in the area that deserve more of a light than i do but like it just kind of validates that i'm doing the right thing and it just makes me want to keep going so like i really appreciate you hitting me up and being like dude i just want to kind of sit down and talk with you because I appreciate your work and I think you're doing really good out here and like it makes me think like 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 I said earlier with the imposter syndrome like I've always felt like I didn't fit in certain circles and I wasn't like capable of doing the same level of work as other people but like when I get some kind of recognition at all even if it's just my homies telling me you know this is a really good picture or you know you hitting me up for this like it shows me that like no nah, you're you're good it's you, a recognition. Yeah, like it shows you, like you, you, it it reassures you. You know, it's like a reassurance. So I yeah. appreciate it. For I mean, I feel the same exact thing as you say that right now, right? Because yeah. I just explained my thesis to you. Yeah. And then when you say that to me, it shows me that I'm accomplishing. You really, it's, that you're goal. doing what you want to do. Like it's it's it pushes me to keep going. It yeah. really does. Like just like my, I have this one friend, Caleb. And he will give me so much praise on my pictures. He's not a photographer or anything like that. He doesn't do. He's not like he doesn't really do much creativity stuff. Like oh no, let me not let me let me back up. He he does a lot of painting and shit like that. Let me let me let me stop lying. But like in the re, in the in regards to photography and stuff, he he could see a pic, any of my pictures and be like, dude, this is such a good picture. But I'll see it from a photography standpoint. And I'm like ah, it's mid. Like it's okay. But like. The fact that he is like, dude, it's amazing. Like, it, just even hearing that is like, all right, keep going. You know, like someone he doesn't have the, the the constraints that you do. Exactly, He's not looking at it with your eyes. Exactly, which is healthy to have. Like the you know some people that aren't in that same lane as you, and they're just like the con just the consumer of your product scrolling on Instagram. They're gonna see it. Like those are the people that are gonna see it. So what do they think? But then having the you know other people that are in your lane, like Austin or Travis or Morgan. All of those guys, like, they give me, like, the technical, like, aspect of it. And then the, there's the, like I said, the consumer aspect of it, which is my friend Caleb. And he's like, no, nah, these are all dope. <laughs> like, it's like, all right, thanks, Caleb. I appreciate you so much. I had someone tell me recently, uh, shout out Zachary Scott, the recent guest on the show. He told me right after we stopped filming, and I wish I got it on camera because it, it stuck with me. He just said that, like, don't be afraid to reach out to people. Don't be afraid to ask for people to work with you. Bro. Everybody wants to help you. Everybody, Everybody believes in you exactly. and wants to work. Like if somebody doesn't, that's that's a them it's rare. Yeah, that's yeah. a them thing. Exactly. Most people, you reach out and they believe in you. And yeah. and it's like you don't even that doing that gives you that confirmation yourself. You, yeah. you can get the confirmation yourself when you start reaching out right. and people do want to work with you. It's like, oh shit, exactly. I am more of a big deal than I thought I was. Yep. It means a lot yeah. when you start getting that feedback just by reaching out to people because 
Yeah, you need the confirmation. Exactly. When you're stuck in a bubble for so long, it gets yeah. frustrating because you want to create the best art you can. And when you feel like it's not being seen, yeah. it feels hopeless. Exactly. Like, why am I even creating? And yeah. I felt that so strongly so many times. That's it, the only thing that an artist can do for another artist is to continue to create exactly. and to continue to express themselves yeah. as great as they can. And just that belief in oneself yep. that's the drive that yeah, will eventually break out it's the only way it so, goes it just goes back to like going all in on yourself too like yeah. just just really like and then like hearing that makes you reassure you know reassure you that you're doing it right and that you should keep doing that but like i mean any hearing like it's it's different hearing and hearing it from your mom or like your mom like obviously your mom's gonna be like oh my god i love it or like whatever but like hearing it from like-minded creators or just you know anyone like in your age range or or on social media like if they the, i feel like you can value those opinions more so than just like cause, i mean your parents are gonna fucking obviously like whatever you put out or whatever you know what i mean like if they're good parents but like bro it's 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 good to hear it from people that are like the ones that are going to be seeing it if that makes sense i don't know about you but I got a little bit of a touch of emotional unavailability with my parents. Really? So it is, I feel like part of the reason I make music is just to seek that, like, like tell me it's good. Yeah, yeah. Tell 100%. me it's good. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Because I'll show my music to my mom and my dad to this day, and I get nothing. Really? Nothing. Same. <laughs> that, and, that's, and then it's like, do you take it the wrong way? No, or do you that's just... what I'm It's an emotional unavailability. That's, yeah. it's, it's who they are. Yeah. And I'm not even saying it in that. a negative way. I love them for yeah. who they are. It's just that's what's happening. And, and, and they're not emotionally in yeah. touch with whatever I'm trying yeah. to do but there. But they still support, and they still will still be like... Yes, that's, they're you know. supporting. In their mind, they're giving me the support that I want. Exactly. They just don't, they don't even realize that what I really want them to say is... This is great. This is... Do yeah. like, that's all I have to yeah. say. It's literally, good. Literally, literally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> don't and do it. I, I do get that because I mean my parents are my parents are great. They're really, really cool. But like my mom, she had me do my dad's retirement pictures. My dad uh retired back in like March and she asked me to do his retirement pictures and she will still not shut the fuck up about them. <laughs> 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 so like shout out my mom, she's cool as shit. But like yeah, I mean it's 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 hard to not look for that validation in your in in loved ones like that because sometimes they just don't get it. Yeah. But like they'll still support you no matter what in different aspects and still love you regardless. And yeah, 100%. So, you can't misidentify no. it. I mean like that's why I approach it with the way I just said it yeah. because I completely understand what's yeah. happening. And I try to not like sometimes I won't even show them the pictures cuz I just know they won't get it. like those weird ones I post like they're just like Oh, okay. Like, you know, like they just and, don't get it. And it's frustrating in your mind because it's like, no, this is good. Yeah, yeah. You're like, this is, I promise you, this is my favorite picture I've ever taken. Like, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? But like, you're you not, don't get it. Like, you don't get it. It is what it is. You got to not look, you got to look for validation from them in different aspects. Well, you know what it sense. is? Uh, I saw a great <laughs> Facebook post that circulated around a few times, and I don't even know the truth of it, but it's just that. There was this super talented violinist who was going to play at the Grand Opry or whatever mm -hmm. you call it. Yeah. He was going to play at this gigantic venue that night, and he's playing in the subway that morning, and yeah. he, everybody's walking right past him. Really? But at, at, the, at night, he's, he's, his stage. value is recognized on that stage. Exactly. And it's just showing that it's not about what you're doing or what your skill is or how talented you even are. Exactly. It's about where that is being represented and where how it's being represented like how it's being bolstered yeah. all of that the context mm -hmm. is the most important part. like he could have easily taken those people that walked right past him in that subway and taken that as like completely like like demotivated him and like completely but but he knows what he has you know he's not going to take this for the wrong and he's not going to take it the wrong way in the sense that like maybe some people just have somewhere to go or like maybe this like this isn't the setting but when you're in that setting and that you are around those people that can appreciate that you're gonna feel that love like whenever i'm around like people that get pictures taken off and like artists or like 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 you know music artists like they will let you know if they if it's good you know what i mean but if the general public just ain't feeling your shit then that's just not like they're just not in your lane they don't get it like it's like it kind of goes like some underground shit you know what i mean like yeah. like i've been to when for the first time i went to chicago we went to this like underground like like 
What? It was like a, it was like an underground drag show. I'm just gonna follow you guys around. It was next time. so <laughs> wild, bro. It was so fucking crazy. And usually in that in that environment, I would be like, "What is this?" You know what I mean? But like knowing what it was, I was like, "Oh, this is kind of fucking cool." Like, you know what I mean? Like it was like it was super like organic and like they were all just in their own lane and like all there was so much love and just like acceptance and. I don't know. It was really, really interesting to see that. And it motivated me because, like, it was like, well, if they're getting all this love here. Like, if I surround myself with like-minded people like that, then, like, I, they're gonna, I'm going to feel that, too, if that makes right. sense. There's a community that they have there that they, is not recognized outside of that place. That yeah. wouldn't be understood outside of there. Like, you know? As you walked in, you almost had culture shock just yeah, by— Yeah, dude, it was the moment we got there. It was the night I got—my first time in Chicago— it was the night we got there. My friend was like, yeah, like, I know this person. They're going to, like, this, like... It's your first impression of the entire city? Y- yes, bro. <laughs> that was my impression of Chicago. I was like, oh, this is dope. Like, I was like, holy shit. Y'all got this here? Yeah. I was like, okay, like, this is dope. But, like, that's everywhere. Yeah. That's Flint. Like, like Jeff Sky, he put on a listening party for spring cleaning, and it was, like, the dopest fucking party I've been to, like, for a listening event, you know? Like... It was just so laid back. He had, like, weed vendors, like, giving out free dabs and shit. Like, it was, like, in this, like, old, like, weird, like, garage thing almost. Like, in, it was so... I, no one would... Who would think to do a listening event there is, how it, is what I kept thinking. But, like, dopest shit I've seen... Dopest event I've seen put in Flint in a long time. And huh. so, like, you wouldn't expect to find that unless you knew about it. But, like... When I was there, it was just all love, all people just vibing and enjoying and, and being in that lane. And like you, you, free, it, it's refreshing because like you can get discouraged if you don't find that sometimes. But when you do, you're like, all right, yeah, there's people out here that that will fuck with my shit and that will be in, you know, will understand what I'm doing. And and it pushes you to keep going. I get that feeling often just when I do these. I'll have really? people come in and yeah. I'll be like, yeah, they get it. Yeah, they yeah, get it, yeah. Man. And that's like really good way to do it because you almost can pick out the people that you think might have that same energy, and I'm sure it doesn't work all the time. No, but most of the time. But when it does, it's like, fuck yes, Yes. bro. Yeah, no, exactly that. Because, like, there's podcasts I'll... Like, don't get me wrong. I love every guest. I'm happy to have anybody in here. And I I, I want to highlight everybody. But, like, there's some where the flow is just kind of, you know... Maybe they're not used to doing this conversational thing. Like, it, it could be a lot of me pulling, you mm-hmm. know? It could be yep. a whole lot of that, yep. which is fine. I'm happy to do it. It's almost testing my yeah, skills. Yeah. I kind of like yeah. it. Yeah, it makes it, like, it makes, it challenges you. Exactly. Which is good. Exactly. Is so good. I, I look at it in a positive light. But, you know, there's, you can even have a podcast where somebody comes in and it's like, oh, that was not what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. And that can, if you look at it the wrong way, that can negatively affect you. Like, right. oh, maybe I don't even want to do all exactly, this. Exactly, like, yeah. Am I going to keep having these? But like you just said, mm-hmm. when you get the right one, when yep. you get somebody who comes in and it's like you click really well, yeah. it makes the whole thing so worth it. And it just makes you want to do the next one. Yeah, you know? it immediately. Makes, it makes exact. me want to just have the next one be like, yep. okay, you leave yeah. and another yep. guy walks exactly, in. Exactly, <laughs> bro, exactly. And it, it reassures you that, like you said, you're doing the right thing and you're... Like, it, it makes you realize, like, all right, maybe I can do this. And maybe there's, there, like we were saying about, like, the, the market, like, they, you can get discouraged from the market, but you can also get very encouraged from the market, too, because you can get on this, like, streak of, like, finding really, 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 really cool people and and working with them always goes really well. And you're like, damn, yeah, maybe I can fucking do this out here, which is exciting because, like, we both, I'm sure, like, you'd, like you want to go to Chicago, but you do know, like, how... Like we, I think everyone that's from the Flint area knows kind of like what Flint has, and they kind of cherish it, you know. In a weird, like we, we're like protective of Flint in a weird way. Like anyone outside of Flint, we're like, no, fuck you. Like we're, we're straight over here. We're good. Like, but like, and it's like I don't want to ever feel like I'm like turning my back on people out here by any means, you know. If and not in a bad way, but like. I've definitely gotten discouraged from like, you know, not getting consistent clientele or whatever, whatever. But that's any, any job, period. Like, it's hard to get your roots down, especially starting ground up like we're both doing with this shit. Like, it's easy to get off track and be like, maybe this shit isn't possible, you know. But you once you get back into like around like minded people, a lot of the times it's like, but seasonal depression around here is horrible. Like once winter, like once summer starts, everyone's like back outside having a good time, and you're like, "We're good. We'll be fine." But like, yeah, it's real. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, I, I feel like when what what sucks about it is that 
I decided to ramp up production of the podcast right when I decided to go to Chicago. Yeah. And I recognize now the opportunity that is in front of me because I keep having these fantastic podcasts mm-hmm. with people like you who come in. And it's people who I haven't even met before that yeah. are in the Flint area because there's a million of them. Yeah. You always think you've gotten to the bottom of the barrel of wherever you're at, and you never have. And then you find this a new client, and they open up a whole new door. Yeah. Like, the, I, dude, don't never forget the power of human nature. Yeah. The power of the human spirit. Yeah. There's always more. There's always more. And so it's just frustrating because I can I, – I, what I'm realizing is if I was still here, I could be someone – who brings a platform to all of these Flint artists and mm-hmm. all of these Flint creatives that becomes exponentially more difficult if I'm not in Flint. Yep. But shout out Rocco Tesla. He re- he made me realize what I'm providing now is a bridge from mm-hmm. Flint to Chicago, True. right? Because once I'm there, I'll still have anybody from Flint on. All yeah. you got to do is pay for a trip out. You can yeah. come meet me. We'll do a podcast yeah. just like this. The trains cost you a $75. 66 66 Both ways. It's not bad at Both all. Both ways. How, that's how I went that's how to, I always to go. Austin. Yeah, dude. I'm actually going back out there this summer. We should link up. For sure. We'll yeah. do another podcast, We definitely man. should, bro. I'm, I'm going out there probably like July or August. So eh, Maybe yeah. you can take me some pictures. I got you for sure, bro. Uh, that'd, be, that'd be cool. That'd be, that'd be really cool. I'll be needing them. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I definitely, I definitely like like I said, I like working with like-minded people, man. It's it's It shows you that you're doing something right. So Yeah, and, and you got to be able to reach out to the universe if you want to pull anything back. Yet. Yeah. Like if you're not reaching out, you're never going to grab it. Exactly. So... I think that's a good spot for us to I think wrap that's this it. one up. I like that, man. That's yeah. good. But yeah, I hope. Uh, one thing I always say at the end of these is, I hope you guys do well. You know what? I'm gonna wait because first, what I want to say is, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me again, bro. Seriously, I mean, it was a great time. I had a really good time, and I was really nervous about it for a while, but it was oh, fun. Don't, it was fun. Don't get me wrong, man. I told you. I do the exact same <laughs> shit. Yeah. You wouldn't think, but yeah. like every single one of these, I'm like, ah. Yeah. And it's always fine. Yeah. So just, just know it's, the same it's thing most with me, of us. It's the same thing with me with like a, any photo shoot, meeting new people or like, you know, getting, trying something new with photos. Like it's. Yeah. Because you're more, diving in. Yeah. And it's more daunting thinking about it than actually doing it. Because once you actually do it, you know what you're doing. It's still just pictures. It's just a different vibe sometimes or like with you like it's just a different person yeah it's not that hard it's still podcasting yeah it's just a different person yeah and 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 people are awesome mm-hmm. most of them yeah uh, i mean if, if they're coming if they're willing to come up here and actually get up here and do it then they're pretty fucking cool same like, thing with you know, the photographers exactly right? if you're willing to come out and let me take pictures exactly. of you odds are you're ready to be yeah, in front bro. of that camera yeah. yeah and if you're not then i'll make you I'll, you know i'll do what i can <laughs> to make you more comfortable but it's usually always like really good. So yeah. thank you, man. This was really fun. Thank you. And yeah. thank you guys for being here. If you watch this whole thing, you're awesome. We love you. You are the top chickens and roosters of the Coop Troop. Those are my fans, my chickens, my roosters. Roosters. Okay. okay. Boom. Thank you guys so much. You're awesome. And, and the other thing I always say, what I was about to say is go do something cooler than us. That's what I want you to always take away from this. Yeah, you might have enjoyed this conversation. I want you to go do something even better than this conversation because... All I ever want to see is a light shining brighter than mine. All right? With that being said, Rose Radio, clocking out.